Laszlo. I'm not the intern, I'm the co-host, almost. Besides, I smoke cigarettes. Yeah, probably Athena 200. This is the home of rock. The home of rock! Who asked you to talk? This is V-Rock. Got the explosive sounds that will blow your ass off. Ass! Learn it, know it, love it, live it. Rock and roll! Cousin Ed here, breaking the chains. I keep Laszlo tied to a chain in the corner so he won't ruin my show. Or grab my ass. Hey there, you're on V-Rock with, uh, with Laszlo and Cousin Ed. We're gonna, uh, oh man, I'm you are doing that all wrong. What? You sound about as much fun as a chainsaw enema. And trust me, that's not a lot of fun. You gotta sound like you're the party organizer, not the funeral director. What are you talking about? Give me a break, and I'm trying to be myself. No wonder we're suffering. This is V-Rock, shithead, not emotion. V-Rock. Doing our bit for the community by keeping this freak off the streets. Cousin Ed here with Laszlo the intern, who's paddling his pink canoe till it leaks. It's V-Rock. Seen a pink canoe. You are part whip, part pussy. That's a wuss, and that's you, my friend. You know how some guys grow their hair long and they look like rock stars, and others, they just look like ugly girls. Little lazy hairs looking pretty damn feminine, aren't you, honey? Z Rock. Here's a song that'll make a man out of anyone, even Lazarus. Yeah, well, I'm going to broadcasting school next year, and then I'm going to come back to Vice City and be a V-Rock DJ. Rock radio isn't a formula. It's about rebellion and freedom, Lazarus. Z-Rock. Lazlo, get over there and put your balls to the wall. Cousin Ed here. And Lazlo. Shut up. Giving you a chance to make a move on a pair of tickets. Your chance in a dirty 30. Yeah. That's 30 minutes, people. Stay tuned. Stay on top. Stay crazy just like me. Vera. Yeah! And Laszlo, if you don't shut up, you'll be the only intern I ever fired. The Rock makes it feel so good. I'm touching myself. Speaking of, after losing a pinky, I finally mastered my butterfly knife, which is the pinnacle of reckless living. My face in roast beef! The pinnacle of reckless living is a butterfly knife? Yeah, or in your case, it's probably staying up until 10 on a school night. Knives are cool. Rock is cool. Cousin Ed is cool. Laszlo sucks. I love sluts! <laughs> We're going to pick up some sluts, hot sluts with guts, heavy metal concert in a stretch limo. You wouldn't know what to do with a slut, would you, Laszlo? I've seen plenty of sluts. Translation, virgin, let's rock it! Cousin Ed on V-Rock with Ted Nugent, a.k.a. Terrible Ted. The Nuge, the axe master who gets more wang dang sweet poon tang than Laszlo. But then again, don't we all? want you to turn up the radio just a little bit louder. Louder! You see the president last night? Man, Reagan, man, fuck yeah! I know you keep telling me to go to, like, move to Canada, but I'm just really not into this whole Reagan thing. No, you like a nice, soft liberal to cuddle up to. Listen, brownie hound, you ever felt up a girl over the bra? Over the panties? Shut up and play some rock. Oh, so you think Laszlo's cute. You think he's smoking. I think you suck. What kind of a radio name is Cousin Ed? If you were my cousin, I wouldn't sleep with you. Ha <laughs> ha, look at that! Shut up, you cubby bitch! This is V-Rock. V-Rock! Got some V-Rock virgins here in the studio. Bitches! What do you think of Priest? Yeah, wow, honey. You smuggling some peanuts under that shirt? Ha <laughs> ha! Why don't you show Laszlo your bazamba? Oh, yeah? Oh, hello. We're naked in here. <laughs> totally naked, Laszlo, man. why are you Rock. covering your eyes? Why are you looking at me like that, Laszlo? <laughs> this is the home of Rock. Yeah, we rock. yeah we're rocking so but hard in here. Shut man. up. Coming up on a 28-minute free ride. Like it with a chick and she throws up and forgets to charge you. Cousin Ed has popped a kickstand. You want to see, Laszlo? If you see the V-Rock Prize Patrol, honk your horn, pull them over, and show them what you do for some great prizes. Sluts! I put a V-Rock sticker on my girl's ass before I jump her bones. <laughs> yeah, so send a self-addressed stamped envelope to us here at the station. We're outside of Vice City in Red Dick, Florida. That's where the transmitter is. And we'll mail you a V-Rock sticker, man. What's the address, Laszlo? Oh, it's V-Rock. P.O. Box 105, Red Dick, Florida, 32686. And make sure you include a self-addressed stamped envelope, because stamps cost money and rock and roll ain't free. Right, Ed? On to more V-Rock! I got a battle axe, man! You are driving me mad. That's some great sponsorship we've got there. Ammunation. Man, those guys make me feel safe. 
Yeah, it's great knowing everyone's armed to the teeth. Exactly! The Rock. What is the rock and roll lifestyle? A leather jacket? Long hair? Waking up with mystery bruises and a nasty itch? Of course. But it's more than that. It's laughing at the establishment, even if you don't know what the establishment is. And that's what Laszlo is all about. I'm 100% rebel. I got kicked out of school after the 12th grade, man. That's why, when V-Rock was looking for a DJ to open the portals of hell and play commercials in between the records they'd chosen, they picked me, V-Rock, home of Laszlo and the Vulture. I tell you one thing. It takes a lot of soul, compassion, commitment, and artistic integrity to play other people's music for money. So listen to this. Don't sell out. I never will. Get a lighter, turn out the lights, and turn up the stereo. Because V-Rock and I have teamed up with the record companies to show you how to party. I've handpicked my favorite records that I play on my show. These are records that I feel almost as passionate about as I do about myself. Only sissies cry. <laughs> Real men stand in the rain and listen to this. V-Rock. Welcome back. You're listening to V-Rock. Let's get on with the rock and roll. I'm Laszlo. Enjoy this one. It's really special. The 100% official home of rebellion. All right, we got some more rock lined up for you. But wait, one moment. I, I think you'd rather listen to me talk for a while first. That's what you get on V-Rock, rock and roll and me. I'm not sure which I prefer. Here's the crew. Thanks, guys. That one rocks. We're on V-Rock, home of the Vulture in Vice City. The Vulture is our mascot, which we need because those idiots, the retards... The guys who wear the suits and marketing think that I can't carry the station on my own. Well, you're wrong. I hope I die before I get old. I'm sure I will, thanks to this life of excess I lead. V-Rock. You know, I was the first guy in my class to wear a leather jacket. That's why they chose me to introduce you to rock and roll mayhem. I even dye my hair, so I must be a rebel. Hey, if you like this music, why not listen to V-Rock, home of the vulture. If you're not breathing fire yet, try a little bit of this. It's Laszlo on V-Rock, the home of all rebellion. This is the 100% official home of rebellion with me, Laszlo, the rebel rouser, hellraiser in chief. That's right. I am the master of darkness. That's why my name's Laszlo. That was rock and roll. Hard rock and roll, nasty rock and roll. Hey, I hope you enjoyed this album. And remember, I'm going to be famous one day. So watch this space and keep on rocking. Yeah. Hey, don't forget this weekend, all weekend long, it's a crash and burn weekend. I believe the Vulture is going to be there handing out sharp objects. It is going to rock. We're going to have to take a break right now, but we'll be back in a few short seconds and maybe even give you an opportunity to win a Vulture t-shirt. Don't go away. Hey, here's another track. Remember, it's going to be a win it before you can pawn it weekend. We love to give stuff away at this radio station, especially if the record companies gave it to us in exchange to play their songs, rock and roll. I tell you, I must be having a bad hair day today. I mean, I live the life of a rock and roll DJ 24-7. So sometimes I'm not looking all that great and wake up in weird places, but I always look moody. So anyway, today, check this out. I got turned down for a date by a waitress. Can you believe that? I mean, who would turn down me for a date? You're a waitress, baby, not a megastar. Bring me some ketchup, honey. Some people just don't know talent when they see it. Or hear it. We're going to take a break and then hit the phones really hard with our heads. Oh, yeah. And remember, if your request is on our playlist, I might just play it if you call in. Be sure to stop by and complete the look to shoplift yourself a V-Rock Vulture t-shirt. They kick ass. All right, going to the phones. Who's this? Yo, man, this is Snow Dog. Snow Dog? What kind of name is that? Yo, you're one to ask, Laszlo. 
I mean, it's just kind of weird. I mean, especially since there's no snow in Vice City. Anyway, what are you doing out there today, Snow Dog? So I'm going to wallpaper my room with black trash bags. Black trash bags. That's classy. Here's some more nonstop Help Me I'm Unemployed rock. <laughs> All right. It's Laszlo on V Rock. Let's go to the V phones. Hello, it's your big day. You're on live with Laszlo. Hey, son, who is this? Uh, it, it's Laszlo, a.k.a. DJ Hard Rocker. Well, I'm glad to hear it, but I thought this was a rock station, son, and all I'm hearing is girls' music. What are you doing? You got personal problems? You sort them out, son, but don't drag the rest of us down with you, you hear? Now, now, now hold on, pal. I'm playing the best music in Vice City. No, you hold on, son. This is Mitch Baker here, Big Mitch Baker. You play something hard real soon, or I'm going to come by the station and shove that sissy soft rock crap so far down your throat, you'll be crapping hair bands till Christmas, you hear? Uh... Okay. Because I didn't fight and maim and kill for this damn country so I could hear grown men abusing the uniform of long hair and leather with this damn awful wailing. I want to rock. A good day, sir. God, vets are so cranky. If you don't like the music, start your own radio station. <laughs> Vice City's home of rock and roll for 75 years. Let's go to the V-Lines. Hello, you're on V-Rock. Dude, you took my job, all right? I, I, got, a, I got a major beef with you. Who is this? Ed, maybe, remember me? Now I'm out driving a bus, standing on unemployment line, getting yelled at by my wife because I don't make enough money? Look, man, the station's taking another direction. It's heading in, a, like, a new direction. It, it happens to be a Laszlo direction. No, it's not a new direction. It's a cheap direction. They're saving money on you. You are cheap. Laszlo equals cheap. Listen, this is rock and roll, man. It comes and it goes. It's better to burn out than fade away. So you're, you're calling me a burnout. Is that what you're saying? No, I heard that you applied for this job with a resume written on rolling papers. Come on. Uh, yeah, and you sent yours in handwritten in calligraphy with a bouquet of flowers. That's not rock and roll, man. Rock and roll's a lifestyle. You gotta live it. You gotta know it. You don't know a damn thing about music. Twisted Sister, I Want to Rock, I came up with those profound lyrics. I helped D. Autograph, turn up the radio. They're talking about me, man. Turn up the radio. Turn up Cousin Ed. What's the mascot's name for Iron Maiden? Do you even know? Give me a clue. Listen, dude. First off, Cousin Ed is a really weak radio name. What are you, like a redneck? What did you do? Let me ask you about high school. Did, when you, you in the high school band? No. You were in the band, weren't you? Yes. Yeah, while you were learning the Star Spangled Banner, I was in a garage drumming to Def Leppard songs. Oh, uh, listen. I know who the mascot for Iron Maiden is. Who? It's a puppy. No, his name's Eddie. Cousin <sighs> Eddie. Where do you think it came from? Cousin Ed. Eddie, oh. Iron Maiden. Put two and two together, my friend. Listen, that was old rock. This is new rock, man. You gotta step aside. New rock? I don't even use the playlist. You probably have a playlist. I rolled mine into a big fatty and smoked it. Uh, listen, I'm a rock station DJ, okay? Let's get some rock served up. This is V-Rock. V-Rock. All right, welcome back. Coming up, we've got a special treat for you, the Laszlo Mega Music Marathon, where I play two records back-to-back, -back, and then some commercials, and then two more records. Oh, yeah, and remember, if you want to get a great new hairstyle, Sissy Spritz is probably the way to go. Either that or a perm, or both. Sissy Spritz, a perm. That's pretty cool. That's what I've got, and it works for me. Anyway, it's time for Laszlo's Mega Music Marathon. Let's start off with this one. You know, if one more mom calls complaining, my son listened to your station and then he flunked out of school, wah, wah, wah. Well, how are you going to learn to party at school, mom? And now for part two of the Music Marathon. Hold on tight. You know, I chose those two myself. I'm sick of people calling up and saying that I don't have a passion for music and that I have a face for radio. <sighs> what is that about? V-Rock. I've had rock. it with this stupid rock. vulture. It's more airtime than I do. Who cares about a stupid bird? V-Rock till you drop. God, I never get tired of that one. Hey, did you hear that BJ's going to be coming back to play for the Mambas? That is unbelievable. You know, I've only been in Vice City a few months now, but it's clear to me that my opinion is really important to you. Don't forget, Love Fist are in town right now. Is it Love Fist is in town? Whatever. I flunk school because I'm hardcore. Here we so, hey, how'd I do? Do I sound okay? Hey, do, do I look okay? What do you think? I gotta meet this girl later and check this out. She's dating my best friend. <laughs> How cool is that? I tell you, man, you can't stop me right now. Since I got this gig, I'm a one-man rockin' love machine. Laszlo is unquenchable. I've had so many chicks this month, most of them can't even remember. And I gotta ask for a raise. 
I need more money to doing this sort of thing in the studio. I'm the star of the show, man, and all they say to me is talk more about the Vulture. Say the Vulture, I'll peck your eyes out. Screw the Vulture, man. I'm about rock and roll. How many chicks did the Vulture get last week? I hate that freaking Vulture. I am the star, and they think they can get away with paying me less than the guy whose job I took? I'm Laszlo, man. What was that? What? I can't hear you. Well, then turn the mic off. Jeez. Sorry, I didn't mean to pollute your studio. What? Stop talking. But that's my job. Oh, yeah, if I weren't a rocker, could I do this? Oh, yeah. I've trashed hotel rooms. Yeah, I'm whacked on cough syrup, man. Oh, watch out for me. Yeah. Oh, okay, I'll leave. I'll leave. Yeah. They don't know when to shut up and enjoy freedom. Let's go to the phones. Uh, yeah, hi. Here's the deal. I'm really funny, but nobody wants to hire somebody funny. I, I mean, how is that fair? I, I mean, I'm white, middle class, very erudite, um, you know, whatever that means, but people just respond badly to me. I, I don't understand it. Are you related to my husband? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh I, I don't think so. I hope not. Have you got a question about politics? Yeah, sure. I know a lot about politics. Hey, can I do your job? You know, I used to be on the radio back in the day. Even my husband can't do his job, you strange, pathetic little sap. Let's have a real caller, please. The most boring show with a brand new host. Entertaining America with Laszlo. Welcome to Entertaining America. This is Laszlo. <laughs> I gotta say it, pardon me, but uh, don't call it a comeback. I I've been here for years. <laughs> Just unemployed. But... I'm back, running the media. God, I love this West Coast vibe. Everybody here is so laid back and <laughs> lazy. I'm here with a man who gets paid to talk for a living. It's incredible. What a concept. Um, he's called a rapper. Oglock, how are you? Oglock! It's OG Loke. OG Loke. You hear me, player? Yes, of course. I hear you. You're only a few feet away, man. Listen, I'm a big fan. I, I love rap, I, I think. I mean, singing songs about yourself. <laughs> That's awesome. H how you living? Straight. Really? Are you really straight? What? You gonna question me? Dude, <laughs> it's cool. If somebody passes it to me, I don't ask questions. It's probably not laced anyway. <laughs> so, who out there wants to talk to OG Loke? Call her. You're on Entertaining America. I love the way you rap about the Louisiana Purchase. Straight! You know the French told us Louisiana so we would have a place to show our tits. My point exactly. Yeah! We need more naked liberty. Exactly. Look, I I'm no rapper, even though I dress like one, but I think I could really get into, you know, getting hammered, singing about setting things on fire, shooting up funerals, ba da ba 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 you know, striking poses, smoking a lid. Exactly. You see, the Constitution was written on reefer by dudes with wooden teeth. You see, my clothing company, Loke Down, home of the G, says this. I love reefer. It's the rules if you're a rapper. Wow, those sound like some great rules. You know, you get a lot of flack in the media these days. At a recent press conference, your manager came to your defense. A lot of people say gangster rap is misogynistic posturing by fake-ass idiots who spend more time in drama school than they ever did pimping or hustling dope. Well, I assure you, OG Loke is the real thing. He's hated women all his life. He's sold drugs to school children. He's murdered innocent people just for kicks. But he rhymes like an angel. And I assure you, it's all in a good cause. So either way, you can feel good about yourself listening to this music. Well, that was very informative. Big Smoke is doing a lot for the community, or, or to it. He sounds like a great guy. So I want to get in on this rap thing. Do I have to break dance, you know, do the windmill? Hey, can you body pop? Come on, Laszlo. You know OG ain't no playboy. I ain't down with that shit. It ain't gangster. I walk the walk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Fresh. Yo, I'm, I'm down. <laughs> I'm into walking, too. But I was thinking maybe we could have a break off, you know? I could spit on my back. You being funny? I'm trying to be. Watch it, fool. I warn you. I got the streets. I got a rep. Me and my man Smoke, we took over. I've been gangbanging since I was three. Ice cold killer. <laughs> Excuse me? Gang banging? <laughs> I never understood that. I mean, other guys in the room while you're... Ugh. I'm ice cold, bitch. Don't make me dump on you, G. I'm the streets, man. I am gangster. I'm taking rap in a whole new direction. From now, it's about making words rhyme. And I'm going toe-to-toe -to -toe with you in a minute. Why do you rappers get so worked up? You're rich. You've won. Stop shooting at each other. You know, and you keep saying, home from the streets. Well, you know what, dude? Everyone has a street in front of their house. That doesn't make you cool. Oh, we got a comedian, huh? 
You got scraps, huh, bitch? You down? You mark ass bitch, punk, trick, buster, fool? Look, I don't, I don't know what you said, but uh, hey, this ought to calm you down. I brought you some malt liquor. You's a buster fool. Lucky I don't hang you out the window or turn you out, cause I'm also a pimp. Including dudes, I'll pimp anything. You hear me? Oh, dude, I hear you loud and clear, man. You will pimp anything. Listen, how many hot women need a man? Because, I mean, it's kind of been a dream of mine to sleep with housewives. Are you dissing my hoes, bitch? Uh, no, 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 dude. Uh, your hoes are bitches. Your hoes are bitches. You a buster. What are you? I, I, I'm a buster. I'm a buster. Wh whatever that is. D dude, put, put the gun away. Don't diss my strap. I love your strap. You're a great guy. Look... I'm, I'm just coming down off the 80s. Please, don't shoot me, homie. Relax, fool. No one's getting dumped on. I'm a warrior poet. I tell a cautionary tale about life on the streets, you know? <laughs> Only too well. <laughs> that was OG Loke. Hey, man, it's been a real pleasure. Straight. Yeah. Good luck with the music. Hope you can make a killing. We'll see you next time. Maybe I'll get to take some callers like I want. If WCTR wasn't holding me back, man... This has been Entertaining America with Laszlo. Peace and chicken grease. The most boring show with a brand new host. Entertaining America with Laszlo. Welcome to Entertaining America on WCTR with me, Laszlo. So, the media. You may hate us, but I've got to tell you, we hate ourselves more. And stop accusing us of being liberal. What a load of crap. This station is owned by ammunition. I mean, have you ever heard anyone complain about guns on this station? Hosts are getting shot by them all the time, and it just gets glossed over. But <laughs> it also means I, I now have a job. If you're afraid of your mortality and never want to die, here's the solution. It's a man who's got all of America talking with his unique approach to spiritual matters. He's helped thousands, or so the press pack tells me. Chris Formage, founder of the Epsilon program, is here. Hello, Chris. Kiflam, brother, brother. <laughs> what does that mean, man? So, Epsilonism, is it a load of crap, or is it the future? Well, what do you think, Laszlo? I don't know. Well, I mean, I... I, I grow my own religion. <laughs> That's just why I don't know. Is I'm kind of spaced out. I mean, but you guys run around chanting lip balm. It's kiflam. Well, whatever. Both sound addictive to me. You know, only popular people are addicted to either. Let's go to the phones. Hey, Chris, Epsilon sounds awesome. But if you read the fossil records, hunter-gatherer dudes had it made. I mean, who wouldn't want to drag their women around by their hair? They smoked anything they could find. That's, like, so freaking cool. Then all the men would, like, disappear for days at a time, and you'd only hear bees shrieking in the distance. You know, I went to a museum once. That guy's got a point. Points are irrelevant, Laszlo. Let me ask you something. Do you want to be happy, Laszlo? <laughs> what kind of question is that? Yes, obviously. Then why do you mock the happiness of others? Well, I mean, this is Vinewood. We're all supposed to be, like, psychotic and dog-eat-dog dog and, you know, bang your best friend's wife. I mean, I'm with that last guy. We all have a primitive side there, Chris. I mean, you should have heard the music I used to like in the 80s. It was, it was hysterical. What's hysterical about being descended from a sponge and not knowing it? Huh? What's funny about being told that the world is millions of years old when, in fact, it's only 157 years old, fact, and its age does not Change. There's nothing funny about that. It's just weird. You know, that voice of yours, man. <laughs> Holy shit. I can believe anything you say. My time has come, Laszlo. And so has yours, if, if you let it. Um, well, you know, that, that sounds good to me. Hey, wait. Are you going to try to sign me up for the military? That happened once before. I mean, I'm into killing people, and I can say, I'm crying when I'm done killing. And then there's Listen, hope. my friend. You can mock, but I know the truth about you. I can see past your jokes into that scared little boy beneath. You, you, my friend, like a lot of other people, are being lied to. I totally agree with you, finally. Inversion therapy. I owe my mom a huge apology. <laughs> Listen, pick a new set of lies. Mine are better. Let me ask you something. When did you last get laid, Laszlo? <laughs> Speaking of lies. Wait, look. I'm not an egg. I got laid this morning by twins. Whoa. They each laid an egg, and I formed out of them. <laughs> what are you talking about? It, great. A horny cult leader with a breakfast fixation. I love it. You know, I'm thinking of a cult centered around grits. 
Oh, wait. I'm sorry. There already is one, and it's called the South. <laughs> For the last time, this is not a cult, Laszlo. It's a fellowship of like-minded adults who tithe money in exchange for salvation and merit badges. Every single thing we do is voluntary, including the swinging and making things up. Why is this whole town obsessed with swinging? Oh, let's go to the phones. Yeah, hey, Laszlo, love the show, man. Hey, I really love to make out with hot chicks in church. Perfect. Join us. We've put a price on salvation, and it's a price worth paying, believe me. Look, if you crave sexual conquest, family betrayal, class warfare, and really feeling like you are a part of something, then just do it. Just do it. It's so easy. Join the Epsilon Group. Uh, Chris, stop trying to recruit people. I mean, you even say you just make this stuff up. Let's go to the phones. Hi, La Laszlo? Ah, oh, Darius Fontaine, look, I told you to leave me alone. Look, look, it was an unfortunate incident that happened to your mother, but I was quite clear. Grandmother, not mother. It's your fault it doesn't work. I nearly went to prison, man. What you told me to do is illegal in most states. Whatever. Look, Chris Formage is a liar and a cheat. He made it up. It doesn't help anyone apart from him. The fact is people need to face their fears. Remember, I always say that. Face your fears. Don't run away. Darius Fontaine can kiss my ass. Oh, you'd, you'd like that? Would, would you like that? I don't think so. And I'll tell you why. Because you are the devil. People aren't really afraid, you know. Yet you make them kill their families. Fears have to be faced! That's what I always say. Just ask Laszlo. Hey, don't bring me into this ruckus, Darius. This is between you two wackos. I mean, and you stay away from me, Darius. I've got a restraining order, dude. Laszlo. The only way that you can really communicate with your ancestors is to pay someone like me. Just a second. I want you to try something. Touch my cane. This whole town, man. I, I think you've seen too many movies, dude. You can be happy. Listen, join us. Be famous. Find your true self. Have a breast, nose surgery, whatever you want. Lie with nine new partners a week. It explains everything. If there are no women, make them. From sand, from garbage, out of thin air. The rich cry too, Laszlo. Well, that's an interesting theory that sounds like it was formulated with pharmaceuticals. But, you know, I would like to find about being rich and crying, because right now I'm just poor and crying. But this is the West Coast, you know. I'm only into lesbians, man. It's destiny. Vinewood only lets you down. In the Epsilon program, there are no series finales. It goes on and on and on. We don't abandon you. Ah, uh, well, we're going to have to abandon this show. Great, my first show and a dude nearly kills me. Now I'm being harassed by a former sociology professor and an alcoholic turned self-deifying cultist. Please, i got to get back to the East Coast. This has been Entertaining America with Laszlo on WCTR. Next up, it's the radio host who's been run out of Vice City and San Andreas. It's Laszlo with Chatterbox. What? Uh, hey, welcome to Chatterbox with me, Laszlo, and you, the good citizens of this town. Now, you know the format of the show. You call me up, you complain, we agree the world's terrible and retarded, there's nothing we can do about it, and we listen to some commercials. That's right, yeah, hey, it's the American media. If you don't like it, you're in for a pretty bumpy ride. Now, this is the show that gives Liberty City a voice. You know, pre-screened over the phone. Let's, uh, let's go to Kara online, too. Yeah, Laszlo, you are so right about domestic violence and the Internet. You're telling me that thing makes me want to put my fist through something. Tonight, we're going to have a public forum about turning off the Internet. I'm with a group called Citizens United Negating Technology for Life and People's Safety. <laughs> what? You heard me, radio boy. First the Internet, then we're turning off the phones. Okay, sounds good to me. Hey, let's go uh, to the phones here, Matt, Matt on line 7. What's up, Matt? The name is Matt. Yeah, okay, I got that, stupid. I want to talk to you about urban planning and religion. That sounds my favorite combination. What's up? People wonder why Liberty City is a town full of heathens and why no one ain't going to church here. Do they? Do they really? Yes. Who? Me. Okay, so when you say people, you mean everyone thinks like you. Shut up, girly. Listen, this is important. I'll tell you why no one is going to church here no more, because the cathedral is damn intimidating. Old things are scary. Now, c come on, the cathedral's beautiful. Ah, uh, son, it's all pointy and official looking. Ain't no one wants that. This is suburbia, and what doesn't connect to the great computer will die. What folks want is a nice big postmodern square building with internet terminals and foosball tables to worship in. 
Uh, okay, so let me get this straight. You're one of those people that want to mow down the beautiful cathedral garden and, and replace it with a concrete square? Dude, wake up! Are you blind to the future? It's right. It's what God wants. All right. And how do you know this? What, did he send you an email? He told me. Yes, he did. He told me, blot that awful phallic monstrosity with a beautiful concrete square. And if you happen to make a healthy profit for your troubles, then it's me moving in mysterious ways. So that's it. I'm campaigning to build a beautiful new cathedral in the old garden. Whatever, dude. Maybe you should be listening to the Electron Zone. I love a man trying to profit from religion. Makes you proud to be an American. Let's hit the phones. Yo. Uh, oh, hello? Y yes, hello. You're on Chatterbox. W what's that noise? My name's Lenny. I, I want to talk about shaving. Oh, Okay, what's the trouble? You had a weird rash? Uh, uh, there's no trouble. I just, I just can't stop. Uh, what? I love it. And I realized something really important. Oh, God. If you shave downstairs, he looks a lot bigger. You know, if you remove the brush, the tree looks massive. What are you talking about? Yeah, man. Now I don't have to get surgery down there. I just thought I'd share that with a few people. Come on, Lazlo. Don't tell me you haven't thought about it. Where do you get ideas like this? Like, my mom said, uh... All right. This show's going great. Uh, this is Chatterbox. What's ever on your mind, however big or small, just give me a call. Lines three. If you shave downstairs, you look a lot bigger. <laughs> Go away. Please, stop calling the show. This is Chatterbox. Hello. Please be a normal human being. That's all. Your show sucks. Dude, you're going to get no argument from me. Today's show is rubbish. What do you want to talk about? How come I can't eat people? Okay. Who says you can't? Wait, were you a socialist or something? Talk more about eating people! Next caller. <laughs> Hi, my name's Ursula. I'm a white witch. I have the power of the night. Oh, boy. Hey, you are... Oh, jeez. Okay. I am your biggest fan. You aren't going to complain about my clairvoyance or something. Have you been snorting some mugwort? Well, of course. <laughs> what is with that laugh? So listen, we're having a meeting of our coven, and we're all really big fans of yours. Wow, that's cool. Hey, hey, here's a little advice. Guys really aren't into chicks who say they're witches and they can cast spells and practice magic and they have an altar. I, I think you're just a confused goth chick. Hey, I'm not confused. It's my cousin. We're really big fans. I've got several photos of you. <laughs> my spirit medium says we were married in a past life. And you know what? I was the man in the relationship. Oh, easy. You're freaking me out, dude. Hanging upside down to sleep doesn't make you cool or alternative, all right? <laughs> I know, because I tried it. Hey, are you single? Yes, uh, I, I mean, no, I mean, I, I'm married to, to, to three women. Please, I still, can we? Okay, but just to counteract what that guy just said, I never shave. The dark forest is quite enchanting. G go away. Get off my phone. Get off my show. What is wrong with this city? It's 1998, people. The millennium is almost upon us. You know, this is much bigger than the conspiracy of daylight savings time. We're supposed to be worrying about computers accidentally launching nuclear missiles on us and how to make a fortune investing in cyber kitty litter. All right, let's take it up a notch. I beg you, please, think of my career. It's going down the cramper here. I, I mean, I'm a nice person. I deserve to do well. I've, you know, people like me, I've only betrayed friends once or twice, and, and they had it coming. Line four is Chelsea. She wants to respond to one of our previous callers. That guy was talking about eating people. If you knew what was in our food, you would never eat again. Like what? Like honey. Do you know what honey is? It's bee shit. Why would you spread feces on toast? I like honey. Oh, that figures. What a surprise. You're into that. Oh, let's just spread feces all over ourselves. That's disgusting. The killer bees, they're coming. Trust me. And I trust we'll have a better caller over here. Hi, this is Slab. I'm the first time caller. Well, oh, don't tell me. You're a vampire. Ooh, I'm scared. What is wrong with you freaks, okay? Your music is horrible. Turn on a light. Get some sun. No, actually, I'm an underwear model. Why do you insult me? Is this typical in your country? You... You show is terrible. Oh, dude, I'm really, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm having a really bad show. Okie dokie. As you say, no piggy. Unlike me, massive, huge, shaved or unshaved, like a baby arm. This is why I model the underwear. Enough. Enough with the personal size or grooming or the shaving or the growing and the thing. Let's talk about politics or public safety or, or Dormatron bondage or something interesting. What's wrong with this town? You're sick. You know, this kind of rubbish never happened to me back in the 80s. The 90s are crap. Do you, do you agree, Line 1? How should I know? I'm 7. Y you are? Yeah, I'm a big fan of 
of yours. I love the show. Yeah, when I grow up, I want to be a witty radio host with a made-up name. Uh, aren't you a little young to be listening to this show? No. My mom lets me listen all day because she works really hard and needs long baths. Why is that? I don't know. After her tennis lesson, she's always screaming from her room about what a dirty girl she is. <laughs> okay. Laszlo, do you know what fuck me harder means? Whoa, whoa, uh, dude, don't drop the F-bomb. Uh, yeah, I mean, of course I know what that means. I thought so. I knew I learned it from somewhere. My mom heard me say it, and I wasn't sure who something that I heard her tennis coach say or something that you said on the radio. I said it was probably you. Hey, it wasn't me. This is a show sanitized for your entertainment. So now you're being sued for $150 million. You're going to be on welfare, ha huh? ha. Gee, thanks. I love you, Laszlo. Uh, uh, let's take a break. <laughs> God, I love this town. All right, we're back on Chatterbox. Let's go to the phones. Yeah, I agree with what you said about Vinewood. That town has got to stop churning out heartwarming movies with kids and shit. I tell you, if I see one more damn movie with ten kids and a dog in a wheelchair and some damn baseball championship, I'm going to start killing people myself and blame it on Vinewood. Hey, that sounds reasonable to me. Yeah, man, it's like albinos. They're taking over. Oh, uh, okay. Let's all have a huff of lithium and take a deep breath, all right? Uh, next caller. Hey, Laszlo, you ever eaten anybody? Oh, God. Not you again. Go, go ruin somebody else's show. You fucking suck. Line four, you're on Chatterbox. Hello? I listen to your show every day. It means a lot to an old woman. Yeah, well, you know, the nursing homes love me. I used to love broadcasting live from that Musty Pines back in the old VC. Uh, I need some help with my family. Well, that's cool. We can talk about anything on the old C-Box. What's your name? Enough with names, sonny boy. <laughs> Gee, okay. Okay? So this is how you do it? No, listen, it's cool, Grandma. Don't get your wrinkles in a wad. Grandma! Oh, what's your diaper? You call me Grandma? How about you call me the woman who just put a hit on your fake name, Midwestern ass? How about that? Call me Grandma. I call you dead, Lazarus. Dead! Uh, I'm sorry, it's not Lazarus. It's, it's Laszlo. Hello, turn your hearing aid up. You betcha, sorry. I come on here to talk about my family problems. About how my son does not love his mother. Real problems about a boy who is confused and lonely and will not take a bath no more with his mama. And I get some horseshit from some microphone fairy. How about you shut your big mouth, Lazarus, before someone blows a hole in your head, buddy? You know, I ask you, why do I even bother? All right, the lines are open. Let's go to line eight. Hi, Laszlo. I'm a mermaid. I'm a big fan of the show. Let me take a wild guess here. You're having guy problems. Why aren't men interested in me? I'm a great swimmer. Well, you know, the smell's a little... I don't smell like fish. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's what they all say. You know, you can never tell that you stink until it's too late. I learned that a long time ago. Well, it looks like that's all we have time for, which is a, you know, a damn shame. Uh, French chefs and self-righteous rednecks don't deliver the kind of radio I can deliver. But, uh, you know, me and my buddy Donald have got some big plans for this station. Seabox, 24-7. All right, Liberty City, this is your talk radio show, Chatterbox, where your opinion matters. Let's go to the phones. Hello, caller, you're on Chatterbox. Hey, you ever had possum? That's some good eating. Nah, <laughs> I really can't say I have. Well, you, well, you ought to try it sometime. I tell you, man, it's good eating. Possum, raccoon, even zebra meat C cooks up pretty good. Uh, do you have anything else to say, or? Pigeons. Pigeons are good, too. Sometimes they come with notes attached, just like a fortune cookie with wings. Squirrel. Squirrels are not so good. They taste like goldfish. Meat's real stringy. You know what I mean? Um, actually, I can't say that I do. Um, but, but if I did eat too much squirrel and put on a few extra pounds, I'd use the Dormatron. Unlike those other exercise machines that require you to be awake, the Dormatron actually exercises you overnight. Let's learn a little bit more about it. Oh, what a, that's a good commercial. I love commercials, don't you? This is Chatterbox. We are uh, taking your calls right now. Hello, caller. You are on the air. Hi, Laszlo. Is that your real name? Huh? Of course it's my real name. Are you Hungarian? <laughs> uh, no, I'm from upstate. Are you sure that's not a fake radio name like Andy or Bobo? I thought all those radio people had fake names. Do you have a question or you just want to sit here and talk all day about my name? No, that's it. 
Love the show, Laszlo, or Mark, or John, or Beverly, whatever your name is. All right, next caller, you're on Chatterbox. What is on your mind? Burnips. Fruit vegetables. You know, albino carrots, as they're known back home. Okay, here's the deal. This isn't gardening with Maurice. That's on later. No, he got taken off the air. He lied. I know he did. I've been trying to make a hybrid of a peach and a Pekingese midget fighting bitch for the last two years. And it is impossible. Impossible, I tell you. Okay, and speaking of impossible, Jane from Cedar Grove is on the line, and she wants to talk about how difficult it is being a parent today. Hello, Jane. Hi, Laszlo. I love the show. I'm a first-time caller. I wanted to say something about these video games. They are warping our kids' minds. My son's dog, Bugo, got hit by a truck, and he says, Mommy, Mommy, where's the reset button? Kids these days, they think life is a game. Well, it's not a game, Laszlo. It is very, very serious. I let my kid play video games, and now he runs around the house looking for gold coins. This is teaching our children to go chase money. My little Sam's been playing this new video game called Pogo the Monkey. Yeah, I've heard of that one. The shop teacher called me today, and Sam made a homemade banana cannon in shop class and was lobbing them across the street at a fast food restaurant. And it's all because of video games. Laszlo, life does not have a reset button. Right, but this show does. Ah, I love that button. You know, it's never a dull moment on this show, especially if you're in our key demographic. Love Media, bringing people and the finest in entertainment together. All right, hello, next caller. You're on Chatterbox. I want to talk about that spank stuff. People say it's bad for you. It's not bad for you at all. Why aren't you talking? Oh, you think I'm strange? Am I on the air? Hello? Answer me, you pansy. Uh, what's your question? Spank! 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 <laughs> what about it? I mean, that's not really a question. Questions usually start with words like how and why, and, and they end with your voice going up like this. Don't it's... mock me. I know where you work. You're just like all the rest. How's that? Fluoride is evil, dude. And toothpaste, they use it to control us. Why do you think all the commercials tell you to brush it twice a day? <laughs> I've read books. And what book have you been reading that tells you that toothpaste is evil? Dentures, The Devil, and The Great Cavity Cover-Up by J. Phil Higginbottom. If you'd seen what I've seen, and if you've heard what I've heard, you'd never brush your teeth again. I suppose you're one of those people that says that diet soda makes you go crazy later in life. I told you before, man. Don't mock me. My taxes pay your salary, you pansy. Yes, sir, uh, this is a commercial radio station owned by Love Media. Advertising revenue pays my salary. And on that note, it's been two full minutes since a commercial. But I'd like to say, if anyone else is stressed, might I recommend Equinox from Zaibatsu Pharmaceuticals. We'll be back after these important messages. All right, we're back on Chatterbox. Call us on the Chatter line to tell us what's on your mind. Line four, you're on Chatterbox. What's on your mind? Liberty City Cox Rule! Ah, that's lovely, thanks. Next caller, you're on Chatterbox. That last guy was so full of crap. Everyone knows women are made from sand. Okay, great. Another lunatic. Hello, next caller. You are on Chatterbox. Yeah, you were talking about short guys and attitudes. Well, you know, you'd have an attitude, too, if you couldn't reach the friggin' cheesy swirls at the grocery store. Yeah, I mean, sometimes it seems like the whole world's against you. I mean... You know, we're not talking about you. What kind of egomaniac are you? You got your own show. How about letting other people talk for a change? You're all the same, you giants. Oh, I'm tall. I'm so important. Listen to me talk about my tall stuff. I think I'll put this on the top shelf. Hey, what's the weather like down there? How's it going, short stuff? Can you get that? You're closer. Why so sad, Pee-wee? Who do you think you are? Short people are people, too. All right, another award-winning show on Chatterbox. Today we're talking about anything, it seems. If you have something to say about anything, call now. Hello, caller. You're on Chatterbox. Yeah, I love the show. Love hearing people's opinions. That's what made this country great. People and opinions and stuff. Most of all, guns. I had it with people whining about guns kill people. Guns don't kill people. Death kills people. Ask a doctor. It's a medical fact. You can't die from a bullet. You can die from a cardiac arrest or organ failure or major hemorrhage. A small piece of metal ain't the problem. Besides, I only use my machine gun in the safety of my own home and car. I ain't hurting nobody. And countries that don't have guns ain't American. You, you know, that's a really good point. Countries that don't have guns aren't American. You know, if more people had guns, we'd have less shootings in this country. <sighs> All right, we're going over here to line two. Hello, caller. You are on Chatterbox. Yeah, I'd like to say something about taxes. You mean the Lone Star State? No, taxes. Well, you know, look, taxes are really wrong. My father worked his whole life. He played the lottery. And now the state wants him to pay taxes on the money he wins from that stuff? Buy your own lottery tickets, you know? Hey. Good point. I think that's a lesson to us all. All right. Hello, you are on Chatterbox. Hello, Laszlo. I'm a first-time caller. I recently moved to Liberty City from Hampshire in England. Oh, really? How do you like it? I mean, is it hard to get used to the language? You, you speak English pretty good. Oh, thank you, Laszlo. 
Yes, yes, I, I do like it here. There's one thing, though, that, that's very different and rather worrying. When I was a boy in England, I had a nanny. She was very strict, Leslie. Yeah, well, I mean, there's excellent child care here in America, you know. Well, well, I'm sure. But the, but the thing is, Laszlo, when, when, when I was a naughty boy, I, 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 I would get spanked. Na nanny, nanny would spank me when I was naughty. And now, now Freddy needs a nanny, because when Freddy's naughty, he needs to get spanked. Well, there's some child psychologists who probably say that spanking can be harmful to a child's emotional development. Ab ab absolute rot, Laszlo. It's lovely. Freddy needs a nanny. He needs a nanny, Laszlo, because Freddy's been a very naughty boy. H how old is your son? Excuse me? How old is your son? I don't have children. I can't stand the little brats. But if Freddy needs a nanny... All right, that's enough of him. God, who gave this guy a green card? This is Chatterbox. We're talking about short guys, nannies, taxes, and anything sane you'd like to bring to the party. Hello, you are on Chatterbox. I was listening to that caller about taxes. His views are a little extreme. How do you expect to be a responsible member of society if you don't understand how the government spends your money? Why are people afraid of numbers? Sine and cosine are two of the most elegant and incredible discoveries of humanity. I mean, the Cartesian coordinate system has an elemental power I find liberating and even sexy. And I'm not ashamed to say it. Okay, thanks for calling. Now that we've lost 98% of our audience, let's reward the other 2% with a commercial. When we come back, we'll have a special studio guest. Special because he advertises on this radio station. Remember, it's not a conflict of interest if we own all the radio stations in town. We'll be right back after this message. And now it is my great pleasure to welcome Fernando Martinez, who it uh, says here is the founder of Fernando's New Beginnings, a revolutionary new way of saving your marriage. Fernando, welcome. The pleasure is mine, Laszlo. It is an honor to be here. I feel blessed. Ah, uh, thanks. So, tell me about Fernando's new beginnings. Truly, Laszlo, it is a miracle, a blessing. It is a revolution in the marriage guidance. For my people, marriage is, how'd you say, sacred. The bond between the father and the mother, it is made in heaven and in the bedroom, if you know what I mean. Uh, I think so. <laughs> For my people, it is the holiest, most sacrosanct thing imaginable like a church. Yet, for it to be a happy marriage, it must also be like a brothel. The woman, she must be many, many arts, be skilled in making house, cooking, changing the diapers on the babies, and she must also be a whore, a vixen in the bedroom, imaginative, exotic, constantly fresh. It is impossible. You change diapers and then you are a French maid? Fernando thinks not. Fernando knows not. Well, I mean, you know, it's an age-old problem. I mean, how do you keep the excitement in a marriage? Excitement, exactly. Passion, danger. How, Laszlo? How? Tell me how, and I give you a big, big kiss, like I give a woman. But I am not going to give you a big kiss. Not a kiss like I give a woman, or even a donkey. Because, because you do not know. Well, I mean, in this case, ignorance uh, kind of seems like bliss. I, I wasn't really up for kissing on air. I mean... Why not, Laszlo? Am I not attractive? Am I not irresistible even to you? Well, no matter. Why all this talking about kissing? I mean, you brought it up. No, my friend. You say you not want to kiss me. I was talking how to say hypothetically to make me all personal. It's a big difference. If I say, imagine if your wife was ugly, you can nod your head. But if I say, hey, Laszlo, your wife, she looked like yesterday's dinner after I eat. You not so happy. It's a big difference, my friend. Anyway... The marriage is impossible, Laszlo. If a man was born an angel, maybe impossible. But a man is born a man. And a man with knees. He needs a woman to tuck his babies into the bed. But for his bed, he needs something else. Something magical. A dream. Un sueño. So he starts flirting with his secretary, takes her out for a drink. One thing leads to another, and before you know it, he's found all kinds of uses for the office furniture. Exactly, Laszlo. I know what you are like. I see it in your eyes. A wanderer. A dreamer. A man who has knees. But an idiot. And I can save you. And I can save your marriage. <laughs> My marriage doesn't need saving. <laughs> hey, you are the one mentioning the pretty assisting and the office furniture and the Aikarama, my friend. Listen, Laszlo, and listen very closely. Your marriage is a gift. It is a present from above. But you are a man. I think we see by now you are no angel. I can save you. 
For when the man, he sees wife all fat, all early, with the dirty diapers and the dirty panties and the scrubby brush and who knows what else. He's not thinking marriage bad. He's thinking about, well, you thinking about your pretty assistant. We already know that. See? And go on. But Laszlo, what if you act on your fantasy for your little secretary with the short skirt and the pretty eyes and uh, come here and come there, smile, and what then, my friend? What then? Um, I get a sexual harassment suit. If you are lucky, my friend, but you, more likely, your marriage is ruined, Laszlo. Your sweetheart, she hates you. Your pretty secretary, she wants you to be her man. You back it to square one. My friend, you and a thousand men like you. For me, once it was so. But then one day, I was driving my car, and I realized, Fernando, you are blessed. You are a miracle. A thousand miracles rolled into one. You save the marriage, and you save the man. You don't put the marriage first, and you don't put the man first. Maybe we call it man marriage. Then I think to myself, no, this is a bad name. It sounds really dumb. Then I think we call it Fernando's New Beginnings, because that is what it is. A new beginning, Laszlo. So how does this work? It is a miracle, Laszlo. A miracle. A man is a good father, a loving husband, the winner of bread six and a half days a week. On the spare half day, I save his life. How? By giving him what he needs in a controlled environment. I give him passion. <laughs> what, with you? That kind of sounds like a limited market. Last Lloyd, you are very prejudiced. I don't like that. But no, not with me. Passion for life. Passion for love. Passion for women. Which he can take home to his wife, of course. What, so you act like a pimp? Not a pimp, little man. A savior. In a control environment, I reintroduce the man to the pleasure he has lost, to the miracles of the world. And truly, the results are remarkable. With my unique counseling, a thousand marriages have been saved, and a million more could be saved every day. <laughs> and, and do the wives know about this? In their hearts, Laszlo, they know they have been saved. Uh, okay. We're going to open it up to the phones. If you've got any questions for Fernando Martinez, exotic marriage guidance made easy, ring us now. Hey, oh, cool. We have a caller on line one. Caller, you are on Chatterbox. Hi, Laszlo. Hey, Fernando. My name's Jerry, and I'm a first-time caller. And I just wanted to say, hey, Laszlo, you're real tough on Fernando back there. I'll tell you one thing. He's a miracle worker. He saved my marriage, and I married a bus of a woman. Now I don't feel sick every time I open my eyes. See, Laszlo? You see? I remember Jerry so well. He come in, he is like a broken man. Like a half a man. A me, if you will. He has no end anymore. And his marriage, it is killing him. Where is the passion? She is gone. Replaced by ugliness. You see, Laszlo, Mrs. Jerry, she's not a pretty lady. She's more like an offensive lion or a tight end. Big and hairy, but fertile. She gives Jerry five kids, but she's even bigger. Now she's like a whole offensive line. He feels no pride in himself. He has no pride in his marriage. He is ashamed of this wonderful lady who bears him so many young. And he comes to me and he cries, Fernando, save my marriage. I love my wife, even though she is a fat porker. And I say, Jerry, you are a man. It is a man's duty to love his wife, even if she is like a farmhouse. And now, Jerry is safe. By sleeping with other women. Whatever it takes to save a beautiful union, a blessing. A beautiful union by a, an adulterer and Queen Kong. <laughs> That's great. So, uh, who's on the line now? Hi, Laszlo. This is Janice. I love the show and always wanted to call in, but you really offended me today. Who is this gutter trash you got on the show? Hey, Janice, I share your anxiety. The studio kind of uh, forced him on me. Hey, you watch yourself, mister. And you, Janice, why are you so ugly? Your husband, he no make you happy? No, he's an idiot and a jerk. But he's probably a good daddy, and you sound very pretty. Angry and a little bit of a know-it-all, but very pretty lady. This is the thing, Laszlo. The women they think in new beginnings is only for men. But no, it is for women, too. For Janice, if her husband goes to new beginning, she thinks Senor Wonderful all over again. And in the extreme case, maybe she come to work for me. And she get a new beginning herself. She discovered the excitement and the passion all for herself. Listen, Janice, you call me cinco, 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 nueve dos, nueve dos. <laughs> now listen, don't try to pimp out my listeners. That is a very early word. 
a travesty. I work miracles, senor, not pimping. I save, I give the passion back. And you better watch yourself, buddy, because for my people, we take these insults very personally. And then, you no longer Mr. Talk Show, you Mr. Who Cut Up My Tongue. <laughs> Who are your people anyway? I, uh, which exotic location do you come from? I am, I am Latin. <laughs> Latin is a big place there, buddy. W where in Latin? I do not need to listen to these insults. I have pride. I have a calling. Many are called, but few are chosen, my friend. And I was called and chosen to work a miracle. So, uh, where were you called from, Fernando? From upstate, okay? Too happy money now? I'm not real Latin, but I provide real Latin passion. I work the miracles every day. Listen, wives, children, if your husband, if your daddy, if he not happy, send him to me, Fernando. In exchange for a few hours a week, I give you the world. Get off. Get lost. You're just a cheap pimp from upstate. Get out of my studio. I save your daddy. I save your husband. It is a miracle. Get out of here. It's a miracle. And now it's time for a public service announcement from station owner Donald Love. Hello. My name is Donald Love. You're listening to a Love Media Station. Enjoy. All right, we're back here on Chatterbox, the radio show that never gets old. I'm Laszlo with open ears and a closed mind. Hello, you're on the air. What's your name? I wanted to talk about spanking. Oh, God, not another one. I think spanking kids is the only way to teach them right from wrong. So you think that teaching kids at an early age that violence is the solution to problems will make them valuable members of our society? Exactly. I knew you'd understand, Laszlo. My daddy used to whoop the tar out of me. He once hit me so hard my spleen fell out of my ear. Didn't do me no harm. Look at me now. I'm the best pest control guy in East Portland. I've killed more rats and roaches and vermin than you can imagine, and I love it. This is such a great country. I wouldn't be where I am today if my daddy had beat me senseless. <laughs> what are you talking about? Man, I'm starting to believe that guy about the fluoride in the drinking water. Listen, if there's any sane person left in Liberty City that can hear my voice, please call the show right now. This is an SOS going out across the city. All right, let's go over to this line. Hello, caller. You are on the air. Are you sane? <laughs> Are you a sane caller? Absolutely, Laszlo. Killer bees. K killer bees. Yes, killer bees. Did you know that if the current migration north continues, we will all be dead in three years? Did you want to become a bee supper? I don't. That's why we must act now. Killer bees must be stopped. I wonder why more people aren't talking about this. I mean, killer bees swarming, it sounds pretty serious. Ah, but the killer bees are nothing compared to ants. You can't kill them. They're like sheep. They're going to take over. All right. Thanks, caller. Ants, killer bees, fat people, what's plaguing you? Call now. Chatterbox, hello. You're on the air. Uh, yes. I'd like to say something about these damn people on trains and buses in the city who yammer on and on into their cell phones. I'm really glad we get to hear about what you're having for dinner. What we should do is herd them up and put them on an island. I am the president of a group called Citizens Raging Against Phones. Crap? Exactly. Your organization's called crap. What, what kind of moron are you? You, you want to round people up for using a phone, but you're, you're calling up on a phone to, to tell the world about it. I mean, but how many people are there in this crap? Citizens are raging against phones, Laszlo. How many people? There are three of us. It's hard organizing meetings without the phone, though. We've had to resort to carrier pigeons, and they keep disappearing. What are you speaking to me on? What's, what's that in your hand? I am not the problem. You are, and you're perpetuating the downfall of mankind. Liberty City was great before phones ruined everything. Liberty City was a church, a cow pasture, and three houses when the telephone was invented. Liar! You're the liar. Liar, liar, pants on fire. What are you? Are you, are you three years old? Laszlo's a liar. Laszlo's a liar. I bet that isn't even your real name. Shut up. You shut up. Stupid. Nanny, nanny, boo-boo, stick your head in doo-doo. Oh, we're going to commercials. All right, we're back on Chatterbox. Let's uh, go to the chatter line here. Hello, caller. You're on Chatterbox. Laszlo, I just wanted to make your viewers aware that... Okay, now, this is a radio show. We don't have viewers. We have listeners. Uh, okay. Anyway, Laszlo... I just wanted to make your viewers aware the first International Puppetry Festival is next month at the fairgrounds, bro. If you're interested in becoming a puppet master or a ventriloquist, you should definitely come down, dude. It's going to be totally killer. <laughs> I wasn't aware that there was much demand for puppet shows these days. I mean... Oh, man. Have you been living under a rock, bro? Guys with puppets get chicks. 
I take my monkey puppet to the park all the time. We play hacky sack together. It's rad. But anyway, dude, at the International Puppetry Festival, we'll be having workshops on finger puppets, too. Hello, Petunia the Pinky. Meet Barry the Thumb. String puppets, glove puppets. Dude, it's gonna rock. <laughs> okay, thanks. Hope to see you there, Laszlo. Hey, by the way, can you give me that guy Fernando's number? Nah, I'm sorry. Fernando hasn't paid his bill to our ad sales department. But here's someone who has. And they paid us in stacks of old groats and gold guineas. We'll be back after this. All right, Liberty City, you are listening to Chatterbox, the show that is the number one reason for the success of the Internet. All right, let's take a call. Who's on the line? Clothes. W what about them? Clothes. What are you talking about? Laszlo, clothes. Clothes, Laszlo. I hate them. I just hate them. <laughs> I mean, we're all, we're all about opinions on Chatterbox, which is uh, Liberty City's premier phone-in station, but why don't you like clothes? I just hate them. They're so constricting. I mean, there's a line where clothes, and the line is a king of the jungle. So why can't I, a humble citizen, go naked? Well, I mean, I guess a lion has two distinct advantages over you. One, I mean, it's, as you say, a king, and therefore it can exercise its royal prerogative to not wear clothes. And two, it's a cat, and therefore it doesn't have to. And three, I mean, now that I think about it, if you want to try to dress a lion, you can. But I guess what we're learning is that life can be a little unfair at times. I'm naked, Laszlo. I'm naked. I, you know, I really didn't need to know that. Why, Laszlo? Why? Does it offend you? I was born naked, and I'm going to die naked. I'm going to live naked. So there, there's nothing wrong with being naked. It's so invigorating feeling the hot leather of a chair or the cool wind from the north on your naked body. I, I, I'm going to have to cut you off. Don't you believe in free speech and free expression? No, of course you don't. All you believe in is free drinks. I'm naked and there's not a damn thing you can do about it. I'm naked and I feel so good. Well, what about winter? What do you mean? You know, I mean, what about winter? When the wind blows and it's really cold, I mean, do you prance about like a ninny waiting for your privates to go blue? I was born naked and I'm gonna die naked. <laughs> and all shriveled up by the sound of things. Winter was invented by clothing companies. Clothes are unnecessary. They're ugly. Have you ever cooked in the nude? No, look, is this leading anywhere? Because, I mean, we've got a lot of other people waiting to talk about real things here. Nudity is real. Open your eyes. Take off your pants. Come on. Come on, Laszlo. You can be a figurehead for Liberty City Naturists. We have more members now for the first time since 1977. Nudity is back. A lot of people are into nudity and really understand the spiritual side. What? Of hanging out with loads of naked chicks? I mean, I see the fun in it, but I just think clothes have distinct advantages, like like not accidentally cooking yourself or, or when you're working on a building. We're not swingers. It's not about sex. It's about being one with the world. All right, dude. Groovy. Hug a rainbow. It's time for a public service announcement from Donald Love. Ooh, that makes me feel all warm and fuzzy. All right, let's go to line eight. Hello, caller. What's your name? Bob. Bob from Pine Creek. Hey, uh, what's up, Bob, from Pine Creek? Well, I've been listening to your show, and there's always people going on about problems in schools. Guns, people showing disrespect to teachers, drugs. Schools are breeding grounds for crime, ain't they? Well, I guess it seems that way. Well, I got a real simple solution. Shut them down. Shut down the schools, and you shut down the problem. No more dead teachers, no more angry students. Well, but you don't think... No, I don't. Never. Now, listen to me. It makes perfect sense. Kids these days, they complain a lot, but you know what? It costs even more. I've seen shoes, books, toys, even special tiny furniture, pets, that sort of crap. It's all about me. Me, 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 me. Well, not my Johnny. No, sir. Uh-uh. I'm learning him the value of good, hard work. Learning him good. At three, we taught him how to clean the bathroom. If he left so much as one hair on the soap, it was off to bed with no dinner. And you know what? He went to bed hungry only 20, maybe 30 times. He learned. Now, he brings his mother lunch in bed every day so she can sleep in. Let me tell you, everyone should have their kids serving up food. He even cooks for the whole family. These days, he's getting too big to sweep chimneys, so now he's a paralegal at Rakin and Ponzer. He's seven, and he's making Madge and me 23000 a year. And on weekends, he doesn't go to the mall, play soccer, read, or do any of that kind of stuff. No, no. He works in the basement of a marketing company making photocopies all night. Hell, he'd go to sleep during the day, but that's another eight grand right there. So now, I'm buying me a bass boat and trailer. What do you say to that? Well, it sounds kind of like exploitation to me. Exploitation? Man, you bleeding hearts kill me. Johnny's mine. He's my kid. How can I exploit something I own? Exploitation. 
You sound like a communist. Kids in Russia, they don't work. That's why everything's so messed up over there. You have to wait in line for toilet paper. And their space station, it was made out of milk crates. I'll tell you, working for a living is the American way. That, and the only thing more American is having folks work for you. That sounds a little oppressive and even despotic. Exactly, Laszlo. You hit the nail on the head that time. He's my kid. I'm telling you, just shut the schools down, make the kids work. That book stuff's all for sissies anyway. And doctors and politicians, lawyers and whatever. I, you know, I can't be bothered to argue with you, but I do feel sorry for your little Johnny, the seven-year-old cook, chimney sweep, paralegal photocopier because his daddy's an idiot. Let's take a quick break. All right, you are listening to Chatterbox, hosted by me, Laszlo, because I got kicked off the rock station. Let's go over here and talk to somebody about their life. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Hi, Leslie. My name's Martha. I just love your show. I always listen to you when I'm getting my colon irrigated. I just wanted to say something about the Internet, you know, the information superhighway, the World Wide Web. Yeah, I know all about it. (laughs) Isn't it amazing? I mean, it's just incredible. I know a lot of people say it's absolutely a load of crap, but how could they be so dumb? It's remarkable, I think. Think of all the things you can do. I mean, suppose you want to buy a new CD. What do you do, Leslie? I go to a shop, and the name's Laszlo. I know, Leslie. I'm a regular listener. Well, I don't. I buy a CD online, and then I rip the music into a different format so I can listen to it while I'm jogging. I mean, it's incredible. I also like chess and cooking and bestiality, so the Internet is really good for my hobbies. I think it's amazing. I used to go out a lot, but I don't have to go out ever again. It's incredible. I don't envy those kids with their stock options or their fast cars. They earn them. The Internet has saved my life. This is really going nowhere. Do you have anything interesting to say at all? Well, um, well, I once crocheted the Declaration of Independence. That's phenomenal. It's probably one of the reasons there are so many single men in this city. All right, let's go over to here to line 79. Hello, you're on Chatterbox. Hello, uh, is that Laszlo? Uh, yes. <gasps> oh, wow, I'm on the radio. How exciting. Oh, thank you, Laszlo. Um, is this on the radio? I mean, am, am I actually on the radio right the second? Uh, uh, yes, you are. Uh, I'm sure it's very exciting for you, but uh, what do you want to talk about? Oh, man, I mean, what, what, what else is there? I could go on all day, but well, you know how it is, don't you, Laszlo? Uh, not really. I mean, what's your name? What did you call about? Uh, 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 I'm sorry, uh, I'm Maria, you know, Maria, like Mamma Mia, o- only different, you know, but, you know, men, M-E-N, <laughs> uh, it's a dirty word, Only there's only three letters. Uh, you, you know what I mean? I mean, your broadcasters are all the same, aren't you? I mean, I heard about you, you're always out on boys' nights. Whoa, whoa, whoa. what are you talking about? Uh, I'm married. Uh, one of those convenience jobs to protect you, I bet? I know what you're all like. You know more about men than I know about leopard skin furniture. So less of that clever stuff and give me some advice. I mean, come on, I got real problems. You see, okay, I had this boyfriend. And at first, he was real kind to me. He was a real gentleman. A little bit older and everything, but he treated me really good. And then it all went wrong. And so, you know, I found someone else. And he seems real nice, but, you know, he don't talk too much. So I really can't tell if he likes me. And... Well, I guess what I want to know is, you know, how do you tell if a guy is serious? I mean, you know, he treats me good, but he don't seem real interested in me. You know, he's always working and hanging out with the guys. Um, say, you don't think he's like you, do you? What do you mean, like me? What are you insinuating? That he's on the radio? Well, probably not. Um... You're listening to Chatterbox, where your opinion matters, or at least we say that. Let's go over here to line four. Hello, caller. What's your name? Jeff from Rockford. Hello, Jeff. What's up? I wanted to tell you and your listeners about a -a once-in-a-lifetime chance to make a difference. There's a rally tomorrow evening at the park, starting at 7. Although we'll be painting banners and singing songs all night and all day to prepare for it. Then, when tens of thousands have gathered in the park, we're going to march on the town hall. Laszlo, the people have spoken, and they have said, no, not in my town. So, folks, if you're listening and want to make a difference, get yourselves down to the park and prepare to bring democracy back to the people. So, uh, what's this rally about, Jeff? It's about people standing up and being counted. It's about the future. It's about telling those morons in the suits, no thanks, not in my town. Not while I have a breath in my body and hope in my soul. I will not, I cannot let this pass. Let what pass? It's about grabbing the town by the balls and saying, listen, son, time to put up or shut up. No more Mr. Nice Guy. No more easy solutions to difficult problems. It's about what it means to be an American. It's about giving something back. Giving what back, Jeff? Hope, dreams, belief. Belief in what? I mean, look, Jeff, I I admire your passion. Really, I do. But what will people be marching for? What's your rally about? It's about justice, Mr. Lowe. A chance to shine and make a difference. 
about thousands of people walking side by side as brother marches. Only one thing on their minds, the chance to make a difference. Bring your friends. Nothing shows a man how much you mean to him more than the chance to walk together for justice. Bring your kids. They can paint signs and will even have a face painter and a vegan barbecue. Bring your parents. Dude, even the elderly care about tomorrow. I understand that. It sounds like a great rally, but we're not a political station, and you haven't really told us why people should do this. What is it about? Look, look, do you want to help or not? I don't know what I'm helping. You're helping America. What kind of patriot are you? There's a rally. You don't know what it's for, do you? It's for hope. Please come, everybody. It'll be real good. All right, you fight the power, brother. Say, later on in the show, if you're into uh, health foods or martial arts, we'll have a special guest just for you. This guy's really special. Kind of like a romantic cruise, but he can't walk on water. All right, let's go to the phones. Hello, caller. You're on Chatterbox. Huh? <laughs> you're on Chatterbox. What's on your mind? Oh, wow. I can't believe it. <laughs> Do you have a question? Dude, I call every day and I never get through. This is amazing. You do a great show, man. <laughs> Thanks. What's uh, what, 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 what's up? No, man, I'm serious. Really great. You're like a total inspiration. <laughs> and exactly what have I inspired you about? Well, okay, right now I live at home, but pretty soon, like next week, dude, I'm moving out. It's uh, the big 4-0 and it's, it's, it's just time to go. Okay. Did you have anything relevant to say? Yeah, dude, that B dude was bogus really bogus that's all great show laszlo i i appreciate that you know, that's why i went to broadcasting school all right when we come back from these messages that help supplement my meager salary we're going to talk to reed tucker it's going to be a great interview we'll be right back all right now joining us in the studio we have a very special guest his new book karate and digestion has been on the top 100 self-help books for the past three weeks he is the founder of now and zen dojo and organic food market in trenton his name is reed tucker welcome to chatterbox reed why thank you laszlo it certainly is an honor to be here today so tell me reed where did you think of the idea of combining martial arts and organic food i mean i mean it's kind of like putting ice cream on pizza both are great but they really shouldn't be put together okay laszlo actually it is nothing like ice cream with pizza Ice cream is milk-based, as we all know, and I am lactose intolerant. And pizza, as you may know as well, is a sandwich derivative of Italian origins, but I won't go on. Martial arts are about discipline and physical empowerment, not watching football and eating junk food. You have to explore your mind and your digestive system, Laszlo. What you put in also comes out. <laughs> Especially corn. What's the story with that anyway? Laszlo, I'm deadly serious now. My mentor was a 430-year-old monk who showed me the way to enlightenment through carrot juice. Okay. If you have a question for Reed, we'll be taking calls in a little bit. I think we all went through a ninja period. You know, I had the Chinese stars and the nunchucks. This is not a period, Laszlo. This is a way of life. Thanks to a strict vegan diet, I had the power of nine men. After morning meditation and a three-bean salad, I could chop a bus in half. Sometimes... I even frighten myself. <laughs> no offense, but you're kind of a scrawny, pasty dude. It, and it says on the inside cover of your book that you still live in your parents' basement. Okay, it, it's not a basement. I prefer a center for spiritual enlightenment. In chapter 17 of my book, which I know you've read, I address the dangers of cynicism. Ladlow, a closed mind is like a closed fist, and karate means open hand. But it might as well mean open mind. If you like wheatgrass, I think you'll really like my book. Well, I'm not a masticating cow, so I really don't enjoy chewing damp hay and prancing around in leggings, shouting, Hiya! Okay, that though, I'm warning you this time, do not make me angry. It's bad for my karma, and it will definitely be bad for your karma. I studied the martial arts so I could stand up to bullies just like you, and I encourage everyone listening out there on Chatterbox to buy my book and learn how organic food and martial arts can help you too. <laughs> and I encourage anyone who needs a doorstop or a booster seat to buy it as well. Let's see who's on the phones. Laszlo, this is your final warning. Do not make me go into my dragon's dance. <laughs> Hello, caller. You are on the air. Hello, Reed. I bought your book. It really saved my life. Why, thank you. I wanted to ask about Chapter 29, Yoga, Not Yogurt. I just can't give up cheese. It's so wonderful. I've rejected chocolate milk and cat's butter out of my life. I've scooted around the house with my legs in behind my head for two days now. But my husband says I look like the chicken the exorcist. I even put all the dairy on the top shelf of the fridge so I couldn't reach it with my legs in behind my head and all. But I grow weak and start knocking things down with a broom. What can I do, Reed? Do not fret, my child. We are all weak. <laughs> you certainly are. Shut up, you carnivore. Why don't you go gnaw on a bone like a gorilla, Laszlo? Our ancestors didn't eat chicken wings. They lived at one with nature and their ecosystem, subsisting on a diet of nuts, 
berries and leafy vegetables. Yes, and they threw stones at their own shadow and died of old age and fear at 24. Laszlo, the soul is eternal. But let me answer the question. When I'm in trouble or tempted by those all-you-can-eat breakfast buffets with huge pans of juicy bacon... Can we get some bacon in here? <sighs> Laszlo, I go back to basics. I start the day with a fruity beverage, some meditation, and six hours of yoga. The next, I go open up my shop, now and then, and drink two pints of hand-pressed potato juice. And who wants a steak after that? Okay, next caller, you are on Chatterbox with Reed Tucker. Yo, Reed, kung fu movies are dope. How can I learn to beat up ten guys at once? Okay, first things first, my man. You need to stop the negative thinking. And the best attack I've found is to just run away. That way you instill fear in your opponent. They never know when you might descend from the rafters like a bat. I don't want to hear about no tofu running away. I want to learn about being a ninja and kicking people's asses. Actually, I do cover this early on in the book in Chapter 45. It's called Stir Fry Your Prejudice. You see, I once thought like you before my master took me under his wing and taught me the joys of soy and origami. Concentration begins in the mind and spreads to all the extremities of the body. You must use the language of the body, not the tongue. And the language of the body begins with raw, uncooked, organic vegetables. Just look at me. I could tear a phone book in half with my bare toes. In fact, Laszlo, I could easily chop this desk in two half desks. This desk is made of two-inch thick composite wood pulp and has a mahogany veneer finish. It has three drawers, and knowing this station, it costs $100. In his own words, Reed Tucker is about to smash it into two half desks. Take it away, Reed. Ladies and gentlemen, I already visualized the desk in two half desks, and now I shall make it so. Dragon stance. Hey, yeah! Oh! Oh, oh Lazo! Lazo! I think I hurt my hand. My, my pinky's all bent the wrong way. Listen, Karate Kid, the desk is still in one piece. Thanks for coming on the show. Okay, Lazo, mockery will get you nowhere. I think I'm gonna hit you now. Oh, I bruise easily. Don't throw any tofu or bean curds at me. Okay, very funny, Lazo. It's easy to make fun of me, but it's all the fault of the feng shui in here. It's downright disgraceful. Yes, it makes you talk like this. Okay, the listener lines are open. This is Chatterbox. You're on the air. Hey, Laszlo. That last guy was a lunatic. Where'd you dig him up from? The state loony bin? And that wacko you had going on about killer bees? What a moron. I mean, just read a newspaper. Killer bees, uh, the evils of artificial sweeteners and soda pop, Roswell. It's all part of the government's propaganda plan. I might as well wear a satellite dish so they can beam their propaganda right into my brain. Come on. Do you honestly believe the NSA's echelon system isn't already reading your emails and recording your phone conversations? It's all designed to frighten us so we don't complain about our rights being taken away in the name of fighting whatever boogeyman they come up with today. Uh, well, I mean, you realize that the government listens to this station, and, and if they weren't paying particular attention to you before, they're probably going to be following you now. Oh, yeah. Hey, look, they already got me once, but never again. <laughs> Do you have anything else to say? Yeah. Free Kevin! All right, we're talking about short guys, killer bees, the Magna Carta, chi Huh? Well, the red light on the wall is flashing, which means that the owner of the station has an important announcement to make. Let's go live to his office. Hello, my name is Donald Love. You're listening to a Love Media Station. Enjoy. Wow, man, that was deep. You know, I really like working here. This station, it feels like my second family. <laughs> Except that we have a snack machine. And I tell you, working here beats the hell out of digging sewage ditches outside Kuala Lumpur. All right, let's go to the phones. Hello, caller. You're on Chatterbox. Last little man, I, I was listening to that English wimp you were talking to earlier. I mean, do these guys realize how wussy they sound? I mean, they, they have the nerve to call crackers biscuits. And they say aluminium instead of aluminum. I mean, what's up with that? They all think they sound so smart with the little funny accents. I mean, I got something for them. Speak English, you limey morons. Well, you know, I think they were speaking English before we were. Uh, the people over here were speaking Shoshone and Cherokee. Man, Cherokee Schmerkey, man. And, and another thing, what's up with them calling soccer football? Man, you, you ever watch soccer? Man, that's a boring game, man. I'll tell you what soccer is. Soccer's for little girls, man. Football, now that's an American sport. It, it teaches you good, wholesome American values, man, like, like stealing other people's land by force and, and wearing tight pants while you do it. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm talking about being a man, Laszlo, something you wouldn't know anything about from the sound of things. I'll tell you, I bet you played wimpy stuff like, like touch football and, and, and basketball. 
look, I'm running around the court bouncing the ball, and I'm seven foot three. I'm telling you, man, I only play man sports like football and hopscotch. Hopscotch? That's a girl's game. Man, that ain't a girl's game, man. Not rugby hopscotch. Man, get me in a scrum and I'm dangerous. I'll take anybody down. I'm the hopscotch master. I got fly skills in hopscotch. You know what I'm saying? Hey, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of see your point, but, you know, you'd be a little cranky, too, if your empire had fallen apart over the last hundred years. And speaking of commerce, it's time for some commerce here. Let's go to commercials. We'll be back after this. And who says that e-commerce isn't a brilliant idea? All right, speaking of brilliant, you're listening to Chatterbox with me, Laszlo. Let's go over here to the phones and see what's plaguing Liberty City. Hello, caller. You're on the air. Wow, I got through. Uh, Laszlo, I think your last few callers are a perfect example of manners in this city. People are rude, and they don't seem to care about anything but themselves. Perfect example. The other day, I stopped at the store to pick up an exercise bar because I hadn't had breakfast or lunch. So I go up to pay, and the lady's like, $1.25, please. So I get out my checkbook, and the guy behind me is like, oh, come on, lady, you don't have $2? And I said, as a matter of fact, I don't. I spent my last $2 last night buying gas at these ridiculous gas prices. And besides, who are you anyway? Can't you see that I'm wearing my I Walked for the Cure t-shirt? People are so inconsiderate. Well, you'll get no argument from me. I mean, I get every inconsiderate moron in Liberty City calling into this show. I mean, people think that I have no feelings whatsoever. Exactly. A another perfect example. The other day, I'm over at the hospital to have lunch with my girlfriend, Sharice. And this maniac comes right up on my bumper, flashing his lights, and I'm like, hey, guy, the light is red. You can't just come up behind me honking and flashing your lights. Then he gets over this megaphone and says to the woman in the teal my Batsu monstrosity, please move to the side. Can you believe it? I mean, who has a megaphone rigged into their car? People are so obnoxious these days and rude. I mean, I tell my nanny to teach my kids some manners. You know, I think that's a lesson to us all. All right, hello, next caller. You're on Chatterbox. Hello, Laszlo. Ugh. Did that woman say she was a nanny? Because Freddie needs a nanny because he's been a very naughty boy. No, no nannies. Let's go to our next caller. All right. Colonel James T., United States Marine Corps, 2nd Battalion. Laszlo, that caller made a really valid point. These kids today have no respect for authority. And there is one thing that would whip them into shape. <laughs> Let me guess. The, the military... That's right. The military teaches you respect, obedience, and it gives you a good pension. These kids that thought they were going to be millionaires, look where the super information highway has gotten them. Nowhere. It's a dead end. Uncle Sam takes care of his boys and some girls. If more people would join the military, this would be a better country. And I tell you another thing about respect. These kids don't respect veterans. We fought for your freedom. When I came back from the Australian-American War, I didn't get a hero's welcome. I didn't get a pat on the back from my friends and neighbors saying, thanks for fighting for our freedom, James. After years of fighting in the trenches, I come back here and everyone's watching TV. Now, can you tell me what this Australian-American War was? I mean, I really never heard of it. God, not another one. Have you read a history book lately, son? The Australian-American War was the biggest war since the big one. I tell you, I didn't do two tours and take boomerang shrapnel in my head so I could come back here and have a bunch of hippies deny history. Those Aussies are ruthless. They even wired kangaroos with explosives. Come hopping into camp. Knock out ten guys. Well, thanks for the history lesson. All right, let's go over here. Hello, caller. You're on Chatterbox. Yeah? Is that Laszlo? Yes, it is. Who's this? My name ain't important. It's real unimportant, okay? Uh, no, not really. I mean, this is a radio show. People usually tell us their name. My name is real unimportant. And you want to keep being a wise guy, you'll find out just how unimportant. Like, unimportant, I just got shot in the head, unimportant. Do I make myself clear? Uh, yes. Uh, why are you calling in today? Because I need some advice. And I ain't doing any of that shrink shit. Uh, if you swear again, we're going to have to cut you off. This is a family show. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm just a little unhappy, a bit agitated, real angry. It's my ma. She don't think I'm a real man. Can you imagine that? I mean, I do a man's job and all, but she treats me like a little boy. All I get is, your pa this and your pa that and you ain't a real man, Tony, and it's driving me freaking nuts. Well, Tony... Tony? How'd you know my name was Tony? 
You tracing this call? Cause if you are, you're gonna get real intimately acquainted with what your brains look like. My name ain't Tony, okay? Uh, okay. But my mom, she keeps going, Tony, Tony, be a real man, stand up for yourself, don't take no shit. But all I do is to be a good son, and I want her to show that she cares for me, show that she loves me, and you know, say I was a good kid, but it seems like nothing's ever good enough for her, you know what I mean? What do I do? Well, Toad, I mean, sir, you know, in life we have a lot of obligations, and we just kind of have to face up to them. And right now, I'm obligated to play some commercial announcements. We'll be back right after this. He's still a dork. And people keep giving him jobs. Maybe they feel sorry for him. He's that wise-cracking doofus, Laszlo. Only on Integrity. Get your hot dog here. All right, you're listening to uh, Laszlo 2.0. You know, there's, it's called Integrity because it's, you know, it's sort of about me, you know? Uh, like, like how I'm going to someday be a, like a millionaire in blue jeans, and, you know, with a guitar kind of slung over my back. Sing, singing about the struggles of, of being a blue-collar guy because, you know, this show's about everybody, not just the people with money, you know? But like this guy. Here's, here's a working-class guy on the street, street food uh, kind of vendor guy. Hey, how much does a hot dog cost, guy? You what, you got a radio show? Yeah, you're you're on the radio. T oh, tell you... us about how you live, uh, like, piled 18 high uh, just to make it in Liberty City. Oh, first let me say hi to everybody. Juanita, how are you? How are you doing? My friend Paul, who lives uptown. Hi, hello. I'm doing good, selling hot dogs. I want to say hi to my kids. Oh, my I want to say hi to everybody. You people just breed like rabbits. Listen, just give me the hot dog. And, and I want to say hi also to my friend Paulito. I want to say hi to the guys over at the Delicatessen. They're always so nice to me. Why are you, uh, listen, why are you people so friendly? Who's, who's people? What you do you people. Mean by, where are you from? I'm from Central America. Hello. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm stupefied. I, I can't really understand what you're saying. Could, could you, you're uh, stupid? No, you got to work on the English a little You're bit. stupid? Hey, you know what, man? <laughs> you have to work on the English. <laughs> we're a team, right? <laughs> we're a, we're no. a comedy team. No, <laughs> we're not a team. I am a radio genius, and you are, so, so I'm trying to expose the daily, so this is sort of like a radio documentary, like I'm exposing, you, you know, how, how shitty your life is, and, and how your, your father looked down on you one day and hey. whatever dusty shit old town you were in and said, son, someday you'll be huffing car fumes on a, on a shitty street corner selling food poisoning to, to celebrities like Laszlo. Hey, guy, you, you think your, your father's proud of you? Come on, man. Well, I mean, my father was, you know, kind of strangely silent my whole childhood, which kind of explains a lot. But listen, dude, I'm trying to bring the media back to the people on the street corner, you know, on the radio, because I thought to myself, Laszlo, get back to what you know. Get back to entertaining people, you know, sleeping with groupies and in broom cupboards and, and, and on yoga mats, you know. Uh, what is this, 1969? Uh, no. Uh, and also, uh, listen, guy, that's your name is Laszlo? Yes. You make fun of me and your name is Laszlo? That's a clown name. That's a stupid clown. Listen, yeah. I'm not a clown. You, dude, I've been around. You, I, I you used haven't to been around? Coke when? off of toilet seats. You know, I took payola. You know, I, I got paid to make nasty comments about people. And, and everybody said I was really funny and that I was a great guy, you know. And deep down, don't you feel like you have a deep, dark secret you can't admit? And yeah. the hell starts kind of rising up again inside. And the, the lying and the deceit. And, yeah. You know, and you look at your best friend. And even though he's a guy, you know, you just you just wonder, what if? Yeah. Okay. And, and you know, and I mean... But I don't go spilling it on the streets like this to a hot dog guy, right? I know this is quite a struggle uh, being a hot dog vendor, living 18 people to one of those tiny rooms and no, Mr. having Lisa, to hey, 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 wire hey. money back to shithole wherever the fuck you're hey, from. Guy, I understand. Hey. I'm from the Midwest. Hey, listen, guy, you don't know my story, all right? Yeah. And my, my mother raised me and my grandmother raised me. Right. But we would wake up every day and we had no money. We had no water. Uh -huh. do, you know what, do you know what we use for water? Urine. I don't know. What? Tears. Tears. Okay. The tears of my family. That's what we had to drink because we had no money. I so you here. would milk your grandmother like she's some kind of tear cow. You don't understand our culture, man. No, if I don't. don't I see it on the television. You win all the fucking shitty singer competitions on TV because, oh, we've got passion. Well, no. guess what I've got? You know huh? what we have? I've you got a convertible. Please, hippie. <laughs> hippie? Yes, hippie. Dude, you're a real prick. What's your... Uh, you're on the street selling food poisoning. You're gonna listen, get... listen, these are good hot dogs, okay? Shut up. No, no. 
Listen, you shut up. Dude, wh why don't I shove your fucking stupid face in the hot dog water, huh? How would you like that? I, let me give you a little bit of Ow. American history, Ow. okay? To people like you. Ow. Let me grab the back of your fucking head Ow. and Ow. shove Ow. your stupid Ow. face Ow. into Ow. the fucking Ow. hot dog water. I am a fucking celebrity on the edge. And Please I'm, don't do that. I've had it. I've taken, how do you like American now, motherfucker? Yeah! That's right. God, I fucking... I feel alive again, you know, like a like a man when you just grab the back of the head of another man and you just shove it right where you fucking where you want it to go. <sighs> yeah, that'll teach him. I'm a man. Yo, you're an asshole. Hey, pipe down up there. Go back to beating up your fat wife. You better shut up. I'll come down and beat the shit out of you. And you know what? I think I'm just gonna get a couple blocks away from here. God. Why are the street vendors in this town such assholes, man? All right, this is uh, Laszlo Show on Integrity. It's in association with Zit, you know, my sponsor. You know, speaking of foreigners, if we're going to get to the underbelly of the city, you know, we should take a cab ride. Excuse me, taxi. Yeah, uh, take me to Frankfurt and Jade, uh, near Star Junction, please. So, riding in a cab, it's, it's a serious Liberty City experience, you know, because these people uh, drive for like 18 hours straight and pee in soda bottles. You know, and then they talk to their friends on cell phones and Jack Fuckistan or wherever they're from and uh, toss off. Uh, but the immigrants, that they, they bring the city alive. You know, they've been the stockbrokers. But, you know, people say, Laszlo, are these people... You're Laszlo? You're kidding me. I remember you. You used to be on the radio. You were so funny. <laughs> yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, man, I was on Chatterbox. And I'm coming back. I'm on the air now. You were funny for a while, but what happened to you? Uh, what do you mean? You turned into an annoying creep. All you talk about is how many women you sleep with. You don't look like you've had any women. <laughs> Please. Okay, Th this mustache, a lot of girls have ridden these handlebars. Huh? You know? I mean, since my divorce. Nobody wants to hear about your problems. Hey, dude, that's show business, okay? It's about reality these days, not entertainment, okay? Because I got to tell you, once you've flown first class, you know, it sucks to take the bus again. That that's why I got all these addictions. Bring back that vegetarian guy. That was funny. No, don't tell me how to do my show. But uh, I spit in your cab. Get out of my cab. I don't want washed up celebrities in my cab. Washed up? Dude, I'm doing a new show. See you in hell, buddy. See you later, Laszlo. All right, this is the Laszlo Show. The station is called Integrity. Uh, I should mention that we're, we're sponsored by Zit. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. This is the Laszlo Show on Integrity. All right, Liberty City, you're in for a surprise. It's uh, the Laszlo Show here on Integrity. I'm out on the streets. You got too comfortable, Liberty City, you know? Uh, like you're at a dance club and you're having a bit of fun with one of the ladies and you stick your hand down a stripper's panties, you know, and you discover a pair of balls. Well, guess what, baby? The bitch is back. But I'm not a bitch. I'm a man. Uh, you, you know, walking the streets of Liberty City, you always see a film crew doing some shitty TV show or movie, you know, screws up traffic. Like here, this film crew has blocked off this entire street in Liberty City. Now, I know from my brief period as a fluffer that the best thing about these film shoots is the craft services table. Being famous means that you need a buffet that follows you wherever you go, you know, and you have a, a special portable toilet if you're, if you're too fat to fit in a hotel bathroom. I mean, God. So let's just walk over here to the craft services table. Oh, awesome. Snake a couple of sandwiches. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, slow down, Neanderthal. Can't you see I'm doing a, I'm doing a radio show here, huh? Live, you know. I'm here to interview the star of this, uh, whatever you're shooting. It's a music video, dumbass. Uh, that's the lead singer standing right next to you. Slow this boy is awesome. Oh, thanks, man. Hey, you're Laszlo, aren't you? I met you backstage at the Love Fish show. Oh, yeah, man. I, I was always backstage at the... We're snogging that guy. Totally sucking face. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, that wasn't a guy, all right? She just looked like a guy. Yeah, and besides, you know, in the 80s, all the guys look like chicks. Yeah, man, are you still incontinent? <sighs> Dude, look, that was totally a misunderstanding, okay? I was really drunk. I don't think that was urine anyway. Because, see, I, I have this move, you know, when I'm at dinner or at a party with a really hot chick, I, I pretend to spill something on my jeans, you know? And, and then I can rub one out right in front of her, and she thinks I'm trying to get a stain out. It's awesome. Hey, what's your video about? Oh, it's fun, Dabby Dozy. 
I'm finally going to sing something meaningful about rain and how your soul gets wet too and how bitches just want to make you shoot up a load of smack. You know, a song that you can sing to your bird right before you go off in a bed there and batter her stupid. Sounds brilliant. Yeah, I don't think anybody's ever gone with the rain angle. G good vibe for a video. You see, there are celebrities on the streets of Liberty City. You can bump into them anytime. These are the kind of encounters that Liberty City's all about, you know, where a man lies under a rain machine, you know, singing about a soggy soul and a bunch of unionized assholes move around apple boxes. So this is the Laszlo Show on integrity. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back right after this. He's getting older, but not wiser. It's Laszlo on integrity 2.0. All right, you're listening to The Laszlo Show, only on Integrity. Uh, we're broadcasting live from the streets of Liberty City. You know, nobody does live radio anymore. Nobody apart from me. I'm your host, Laszlo. I gotta tell you, it's been a long time, Liberty City. Too long for, for both of us. Kind of had a dry spell there, you know. Liberty City's like a woman, you know. You love her, you hate her, you come crawling back to her so she can step on your dreams. But, but I do love the women here, you know. The chicks in Liberty City have higher expectations than the slow lobs in Vice City, and they're not as paranoid about you slipping in some GHB to their drink. This is the media event of the century, because I'm bringing radio back to the people. It's Radio 2.0. It's the future. You know, you don't listen with your ears, you, you listen with your soul. We're going to be doing a radio show and a podcast about a radio show and, and a blog that, that's about the podcast that's about the radio show. It, it's it's media intermingling, uh, like, uh, like one of those magazine ads that have all different ethnicities. You know, I'm getting under the city's skin, you know, into the fatty layer with the, with the warm pillow of a gunt to rest your head on. You look up and you go, where's my dignity? With this radio show, I'm making a difference. It, and it's all in association with our sponsor, Zit, because we can spot the song you're looking for. You're listening to the radio, you hear a song, call Zit, 948-555-0100. Yeah, that's right, I'm walking the streets doing a show. This is live, people, huh? This is radio. Can you keep your voice down? You're talking too loud. Hey, easy, honey. I I'm on the radio. Who cares what this is? Shut up. Yeah? Can you wear a bag over your head? You're ugly. Go play some Sudoku and die peeing on yourself. You don't talk to the media like that. This is radio, in association with my mega awesome sponsor, Zit. This is about people taking the city back from the media barons. I'm literally walking the streets of Liberty City, interviewing people, getting questions answered, you know? Discovering why people want to live in a crime-infested, overpriced dump without trees. Uh, excuse me, sir, uh, can I speak to you for a minute? What do you want? Well, I, I want you to... Hey, hey, I'm not like that. I'm not a knob goblin. Hey, listen, easy, okay? You're not my type. I prefer, you know, unconscious chicks or or MILFs with, with stretch marks. Besides, listen, dude, <laughs> I'm famous. D do you want to be famous? No way. I don't want the paparazzi taking pictures of me naked doing coke. Sorry, bro, you're a little too late. You just made radio history. You're the very first guest on Integrity 2.0. This is history, my friend. The Laszlo Show here making media history, like, like when they shot the president on that episode of 72. Oh, I've been up for three days. I'm, I'm really moody. I'm trying to fight terrorism. You know, how come nobody on TV goes to the bathroom? What are you talking about? Have you been drinking? I, I, uh, yeah, a, a little. But, but listen, quiet, okay? I'm talking. Let the host talk. People will remember this show. They'll remember this time because, you know, I'm finally reinventing radio. I'm, I'm like Laszlo Marconi, you know? I've tried blogging, porn. I've tried Vinewood, uh, glory holes, facefuls of pills. But screw that, you know? I'm not about dependency anymore. It's finally about me, you know? I mean, because I'm a good-looking guy. I got a six-pack, huh? Look at that, huh? Oh, dude, don't show me your stomach. That's disgusting. Hey, uh, come back here. I I'll show you my glutes. Now leave me alone. Come on, come on, you made history. No way. You're like the John Wilkes Booth of radio. What is wrong with the people of Liberty City, you know? Don't they want to be famous? Excuse me, madam. Uh, look, listen, you're live on the radio. Uh, have you got anything to say? What? No, my God. Uh, no, take, take your time, honey. This is the reality of live entertainment. L like when I put on a fat suit and go and feel up tourists. You know, or, or that thing that got me indicted. Uh, are you finally ready? What are you talking about? Uh, it's, no, it's okay. T take your time. No problem. 
You know, imagine you're a stud about to impregnate a prize racehorse, you know? I'm kind of like the sea biscuit of radio. Did you just call me a horse? N not really, but now that you mention it, I'm just getting metaphorical in sort of an equestrian sense, you know? You know, because I've written fantastic poetry, you know? I bet you look at me and you're thinking, wow, what a guy, you know? How can I coax this filly into a moral congress? Can this man make a video with a horse? You know, lust. It's an idea, you know, like freedom, like like girls with leg braces falling downstairs, like like dark matter, you know, like like shaking it when you're done at the urinal. But it doesn't really help. So tell me, what's on your mind here in Liberty City? Yeah. Um. Oh my God, am I on the radio? <laughs> Do you not realize that uh, th this is a microphone, stupid? Oh my God, you're an asshole. No, actually, I'm a DJ, but but I don't spin records. I spin words in the minds. Uh, let's go over here to this guy sitting there, you know, eating eating lunch outside. Uh, uh, what do you think is the problem with this city? The problem with this city? Man, look, look around you. Look at these women. Look at, the, look at these skirts. Look what they're wearing. They wear these things and they don't want you to touch them. All of a sudden, a cop is after you. All of a sudden, their boyfriends are coming after you. Why? You want to show me parts of your body? I want to touch them. Let me touch them and I'll go away. I don't want to have babies with you. I just want to touch for a little while. Is that a crime? Uh, actually, sort of, yeah. Yeah, you can't okay. just go grabbing uh, your women's uh, buttocks. What about lightly? No. Hey, we're, we're people, too. We're part of society. And all we're doing is we're just grabbing for a little while and letting go. Yeah. Nipples. Uh, necks. Uh, buttocks. Okay. I thighs. Got, I gotcha. Okay. Front. Listen, give back. me the microphone back. Feet. Listen, I agree with you. I mean, fashion's in big trouble in this city. I, you know, women uh, sometimes, like you say, are, are so attractive you, you, you can't help but, but bite them. Yeah. Uh, and, and then there's other women that are wearing, like, those lime green and orange rubber clog sandals. Ugh. I, I mean, you know, women are wearing tit curtains now that, oh, that make them yeah. look pregnant. I mean, you know, yeah. men wearing women's jeans. I, oh. I mean, you, you get in trouble mm. for hanging outside a women's clinic now to cruise mm. on chicks. I, you get what, in trouble for that? Good. What happened to freedom in this city, you know? I mean, the mayor's shutting down the porn stores, you know, it's banning shame. smoking and trying to trying to outlaw fun. But there's more places you can go, man. You can find some, some more places to, to find women. Like schools. Could you really not rub your junk Why not? and talk about Why not? Let schools? me just do it for a little while. Dude, listen. Schools. Stop. Listen, dude. Oh. Okay, just just finish up. I, I don't want to be. There we go. I just don't want to. There we go. I just don't want to be. That's uh, it. That's all okay. I wanted to do, and there it is. Okay. I there didn't want to give you uh, blue balls on my uh, radio show. Oh, you know what a day. I mean, I'm talking about the glory days in life. You know, I mean, if you think back to when when 16 year olds could drink and listen to metal music, you know, and you could smoke in bars, you you could get into high speed accidents, and you could, be, dude, I lost my right arm, and your friends would say, dude, who cares? You can drum. Totally. Uh, you know, I mean, it's like, I. I I you, could, think you, could, you could do it with your sister. Dude, shut up. I'm trying to do a fucking radio show here. You know, I, I mean, things were so much simpler before I got divorced, you know. But this really isn't about me. It's about uh, you, the people on the streets, uh, yeah. th this guy uh, mm -hmm. rubbing his junk. You know, I mean, it's about a revolution, you know. Yeah. Uh, anyway, this is Radio 2.0. It's an association with Zit, you know, because nobody's been this edgy or, or, or even stupid to, to, to take on the media. You know, this is the number one media investment of our time. You go out, you talk to the real people people of Liberty City, you know, and then you've got everything set up, and then the fucking assholes at the Bank of Liberty deny your loan the day that the rent on your studio... Oh, dude, they're the worst. So, you know the little plastic window thing? I put my junk right through the little hole in the window. Uh, you know, my life's an amusement ride, it, it, and it needs to be on the radio, because... You know, in life, it's like you wait in line all day for this ride called life. You you sweat, you hate yourself, and then it's over in 45 seconds. And she looks at you, she says, you know, I have to go. And, and she sort of gets it leaves the room awkwardly. And, and you just wish that once you could share a bed with someone who wouldn't get creeped out by the pictures of my ex-wife on the nightstand. I got to take a break. Telling it like it is on the tough streets. Here's Laszlo trying to reclaim his integrity. All right, you're back. It's the Laszlo Show on Integrity. Integrity is the name of the station. I'm out here walking the streets of Liberty City, doing a live radio show, meeting the real citizens of the city, you know, getting urban, you know, like, like a music video. And I'm in slow-mo, and you know, there's just girls dancing around me. Uh, excuse me, young man, uh, uh, do you want to be on the radio? Young man, you trapped in the 70s? Nobody says young man. What else are you going to say? Fresh? Look, whatever, homeboy. Listen, uh, tell me what the kids are into. 
to. Yeah, because i got to connect with the kids. You know, not my private parts, you know, but that, that's for online. But what are you out doing? Yo, I'm delivering weed. But y you're only like 13. Exactly. I won't go to prison. That's what my cousin told me. We work for FlyHighPizzaPie.com. You want to smoke? It's good shit. I got purple goat, widow's laughter, blueberry nightmare, Amsterdam amnesia, and some hydroponic nun's vagina. It's all good. It's good shit. Blow your head off. Only $600 a quarter. Damn. And this city is some overpriced shit. Look, I don't need fancy brand names for reefer. Commercialism is destroying the grit of this city. You know, when you could catch an STD from a from a him, her, you know? Look at Star Junction. People singing to each other and fisting puppets and instead of having gunfights and just shooting horse. Get out of here. You know, this show is not going to be like the one I did at that, that radio station in buttfuck nowhere. I spent the last few years of my life in a gin martini getting shot shafted by the cruel fates of slow career suicide. The city makes you angry. Makes you want to rip a, rip a fool's head off. You know, bite people on the cheek for talking on the fucking mobile phone on the train. You know, bite people walking too slow up the stairs of the subway. You know, bite people that are more successful than me. It's like I'm radioactive. Why can't I have a girl half my age like all my friends that are in the media? Huh? Someone young and dumb. You know, I've taken a lot of risks, j just like this. You know, I'm, I'm back. They say you can't keep a good guy down. Uh, you, sir, can you keep a good guy down? Sure, but I don't want to go down, man. You can go down on me. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, easy fella. You know, I'm a raging heterosexual. <laughs> Ask my ex-wife. That's why they call me Jackrabbit Jones. What is wrong with this place? God, you people are freaks. Hey, asshole, I'm not a freak. Right, whatever. You know, there may be a lot of freaks in Liberty City, but the biggest freak in town is back. Me. Excuse me, ma'am. My, my name's Laszlo. Am I the biggest freak you've ever met? Are you kidding? You should meet my husband. He wears my underwear when he thinks I'm out of the house. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that, you know? I mean, I've worn panties. Damn, you got some problems, son. Hey, it's not weird if a chick asks you to do it. You know, then it's hot. Listen, I I'm, I'm kind of divorced. No wonder. You gotta be a man, Laszlo. Yeah? Listen, are, are you and your husband up for maybe some webcam action? Uh, you know, you could you could pay to watch me dance online. I, I can do like the windmill nude. Break dancing? Are you kidding? Get away from me, please! Fine. You know, you probably don't even have a blog. Maybe it's this mustache and my sexually suggestive T-shirt that freaks people out. You know, I'm just trying to do a radio show. But but actually, that's what's great about Liberty City. You know, you spend two hundred dollars on a vintage T-shirt. You wear five hundred dollar designer hip hop pants. And, and limited edition neon high tops that some teenager scribbled on with a marker, and, and you're on the cusp of fashion. Well, at least that's what everyone tells me. This mustache once got me laid. Yeah, you know, she was a slow girl, kind of deaf in one ear, but man, you know, you give her $10, she was yours in an alley for 10 minutes. Love to eat pennies, that girl. Uh, excuse me, sir. Hey, uh, I'm doing a radio show here. It's kind of like a like a social networking site where, where nobody cares about you or your stupid profile. Uh, l l let me ask you. What's your favorite website? I, I, I like um, the, the top three or the top one. It depends on what's, what's, which one you want to go by, but which chart is. Uh, I can't stop checking out electrictit.com. I mean, there's this one thing where there's teenagers lip syncing. Oh, the viral head. videos. Yeah. yeah. yeah and there's, a, uh, there's a whole bunch of them that are uh, like teenagers and they're lip syncing the songs in their bedroom. And it's like a high school talent show, but I, I, I can't get arrested. It's streaming audio. Isn't that where it's there's, like, photos. Like there's a cup and there's two girls? And yeah. But there's a back door you could take. It's, it's, Listen, I don't need to hear about your back door. I'm trying to do a radio show. All right. Oh, okay. So you do a radio show? Yes, is I'm it doing streaming a radio. online. Listen, is it streaming online? Listen, I'm, I, it, all I know is this internet is seriously cutting into my radio career because I, I got to tell you that the MP3, please, nobody's going to be talking about MP3. Okay, I'm going to show radio you. Radio yeah. is coming back Radio's because it's Laszlo. Yes, it's, it's really Laszlo 2.0. I'm out here on the street. No, Dude, died. this is some edgy shit. No, it's not edgy shit. It's not edgy shit at all. Uh, dude, it's not. It's the radio. I want to download it. It's the radio. Streaming radio. Listen, I, I want to start my own clothing line. Can you help me with the website? Virtual or real? Yeah. I, real. You okay. know, I want to sell, like, bowling shirts, karate uniforms, like, trainers, cocks. How much memory do you have? 
How much memory? How I don't gigs? know. I just want a website where you can buy Laszlo stuff. You know how much memory? What are the gigs? I don't know. Listen, I'll tell you what I need. I need stuff. A lot of my fans. Do you have an external hard drive? I'll, no. A lot of my fans like Huff Gasoline. They watch professional wrestling. You know, they want to be I able to, to put on a Laszlo shirt and knock kids off of bicycles. And, you know, and and that that was That's rock and living. roll in Vice City in the '80s. I mean, that was rock and roll. And then my career hit the skids, and I'm I'm stuck doing this and talking to you with your horn rim glasses and. You've never is seen it, a vagina. Is, and what, what is, I've seen many what vaginas. What has happened okay? to me? Listen, let's go. I'm going to go talk to this chick over here. Excuse me. Me too. Hey, lady? No, leave her lady. alone. Hi. Leave her alone. How are you? What's your URL? Leave her alone. How much memory do you have? Excuse me, ma'am. What do you want? I, I'm doing a radio show. Nobody listens to the radio anymore. Give me a break. We have the internet. You ever heard of it? Now leave me alone. I'm trying to send a text message. You're trying to send a text message. LOL. Listen, I'm doing Radio 2.0. You know, radio's been around for a long time. It, it, this is like real-time MP3. Whatever. If I can't send emoticons through it, I'm not interested. If you get really drunk and pretend that your face is a punctuation mark, you can really get to the bottom of life's gripping questions. Uh, okay. Whatever, old man. Old oh, man? You bitch. You'll never get to experience the 80s, except for one of those stupid clip shows on MeTV where washed-up comedians make snarky comments. You know, I may be bitter and divorced, but but I plan on getting a sports car, you know, and figuring out how to play online games and, and banging chicks like you and then dropping you back off at school. You know what? Nobody likes your breasts. You know that? Huh? When I was massively famous in the 80s, you know, launching my radio career, there was this weird performance art about robots. And, and a very bizarre man theorized that one day DJs would be replaced by robots and that a machine would pick the music and hold humans in slavery, walking around with their portable devil. DJ machines. And here we are in Liberty City, and the world is oblivious. They've got headphones on. But I'm here doing this, trying to get people to listen to the radio, to rise up, because they're all controlled by robots. Speaking of robots, let's uh, take a quick break. This is the Laszlo Show on Integrity. Hey, this is Laszlo for Zit. Let me hear the track, and we'll text you the artist and the name of the song. He started as an intern on Vice City's V-Rock, then a full-time DJ, before turning to Los Santos-based Entertaining America, and then Chatterbox. Now, after being forced out of town by overzealous regulators upset about payola scandals, drug problems, and continued accusations of sexual deviancy, he's back. Laszlo on Integrity 2.0. So everybody, you're listening to Integrity 2.0, and we're back. We have got funding. We got funding. We are back on the air. And as soon as I can figure the technology out and what a, a DNS is, we will be live on the World Wide Web, streaming uh, with what I believe is called a web page. That's right, Integrity 2.0 taking free speech somewhere entirely new, the Internet. We're going global. Global people, like like all the way around, or people like don't even wear bras or shoes. It, it's a great big media reach around, and for once, Laszlo is not getting bummed. I am doing the bumming. I'm bumming the world. Where am I going to stick it? Oh yeah, yeah, you take it, baby. You like that? Maybe I'll pull your hair, world. Maybe a little low, uh, below the equator. How do you like that? How do you like that? Who's your daddy now, world? Laszlo, yeah, that's right. I am the Big Bang. <laughs> I'm back. I was a dwarf star, and now I'm fucking supernova. <laughs> so, everybody, uh, welcome Integrity 2.0. After a few weeks off the air, we're back. We got funding. And I want to say, seriously, uh, a, a quick moment. Thanks, Mom. Money's rotting in your 401k. The financial district screwed everybody in this country. Invested new media. Me. And now your money is building a show business empire. One brick at a time. Today, Liberty City. Tomorrow, reach around. <laughs> I love you, Mom. This is the best thing you ever did for me. And I love you, too, Stepdad Isaac. I mean, I, seriously, I love you. Uh, you know, I admit I struggled when you came into my life and our family, but I really do love you. I know you're the man of the house. Now, I can accept the rules about the curfew. You know, I, I'm going to get my new place as soon as I find something suitable. I respect you. I respect your rules. I cherish our time together. There, all right? I said it. Okay. Liberty City, the media. It's a fucking jungle out there, like a like a Greek girl's pants, you know, thick shrubbery. I'm talk, talking like undergrowth, overgrowth, where she's busting out the sides, you know, in a massive sweet spot that emanates juice. That's me. Yeah, I'm the G spot of radio. And I'm back. I, I'm a middle aged man who has been forced by the collapse of global media to move back in with his mom and his truly wonderful stepdad, cockface, on 
I'm sorry, I mean Isaac. And, and yet, my namesake, Lazarus, and that's my name. I, I'm back from the dead. It's Laszlo 2.0, Integrity 2.0, maybe even 3.0 some days. You know, beaten but never broken. You can't take a broadcasting titan down. I, I learned that. And, and trust me, I'm no exception. I'm here to stay, like the national debt or syphilis. I'm that unwelcome itch and pus-ridden sore that just won't die. I'm telling the truth about the city, to the city, for the city, and any corporate sponsors who want me to put in a good word for them, trust me. I'm available for sponsorship. I'll tattoo your shit. I'm a junk. <laughs> I don't care. I know about branding. You know, I do public appearances. I go out there, uh, give some shit away. T-shirts, dog. T-shirts. I'll hand out samples of your product, spray cheese, cigarettes. I'll give them to kids. I don't give a shit. I love capitalism. I hate taxes. Um, and about the appearances, you know, I got good rates. I'm a funny guy. I make people love me, and, and, and that means they'll love your product. Uh, my last public appearance was incredible. It, it was for my Stepney's Jill's bat mitzvah. I mean, they didn't pay me formally, uh, you know, so I sort of grabbed what I thought I was worth out of that, that bag they hand around. I mean, you know, it's the honor system, really. Integrity is what the show's about. You know, I did a bit of stand-up there. The, the Beanie Kids, <laughs> they love me. I don't think they're allowed to watch TV. You know, they related to my stories about sleeping with fat rock groupies. They really did. I told this incredible joke about incest. <laughs> Man, it was shocking. I mean, it was daring, but it was true. My stepdad's family's riddled with the stuff. I mean, family tree like a tent pole. More inner cousin marriage than a bunch of hillbilly hamsters. And you married into that family, Mom. Nice one. You know, Dad's not so bad. So he drinks a little bit. I drink every day. Huh? And Martin, my brother, you're, you're Judas and a loser. Being a rich TV producer is not cool anymore. This is fucking... The 2000s, bro. Nobody watches TV. We steal everything on the internet. That's why I'm gonna be a new media player, you know? Playing this city like a dirty old man plays a tween chat room. Just that amazing feeling, wondering if when you go over to her house, is it going to be a setup? Uh, we're coming to you almost live from the streets of Liberty City, talking to real citizens, prominent street folk, you know, disadvantaged people, people in wheelchairs with one leg, urban characters, stinky homeless people, you know? God damn, boy, you just talk and talk and talk and never say nothing. What? You're going to pay me my goddamn money like you said. I've been playing this goddamn saxophone, walking with your ass for three blocks. Yes, you've been walking with me for three blocks because I need theme music, you moron. And something about a saxophone just says, the streets. It says, I'm lonely, I'm gritty, there's a siren in the background, it's raining, I've just thrown up on myself. Should I play some jazz or sit on my pea-stained mattress and cry, tie off my arm, insert some skag? Rich, what the fuck you talking about? You said you're gonna pay me two fucking dollars! Uh, I haven't got change, all I got is a five. Don't you have change? You're, that's what you do, you're supposed Hey, man, fuck you. I got to learn a living out here, buddy. Uh, so am I. So the fuck am I. Look, I'll give you a five. Just sing the song I told you to sing at the beginning of the show. I can't remember it. Well, here's a hint. Who's your favorite radio celebrity? Martin Sirius? <laughs> Martin Sirius? Fuck that hack sellout. Me, Laszlo. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, right. I love your show. I love it. Leslie with the show Intimacy. Leslie? It's Laszlo with integrity, not intimacy. They offered me that gig, but even I won't stoop that low. You know, a couple's sexuality show, taking calls from perverts and morons in the middle of the night, how to keep things hot in your marriage when she's as frigid as an Eskimo. Is it fidelity sexy? Let's talk about marital aids. I mean, give me a break, people. Nobody wants to hear about sex on the radio, please. Come on, Clarence. It's Theodore. Bullshit. All saxophone players are called Clarence or Walter. Now, if you're a musical people, you sure are cranky. Say what? What'd you, what'd you say? I mean, homeless people. Homeless people. I'm not racist. Uh, let's face facts, ladies and gentlemen. Fair people of Liberty City. I may have stumbled in life. Stumbled, been on my knees a little bit, but I'm a man. A tiger. I'm Laszlo. And a tiger needs cubs. She was an intern. It was rock and roll. What do you expect? You know, I really thought my wife was more sophisticated than that. But no, what did she do? After she found out, she ran off with my best friend, you cliche-ridden bitch. You're ridiculous. Well, you didn't tame me, and you couldn't tame me. You've tamed him all right. 
right? I saw the pictures of you guys online on your around the world vacation. Oh, I'm sure that was a lot of fun. Sure, he's smiling now. You know I'm packing more junk than him. Trust me. I'm the king of whiskey dick, but when I'm sober, I'm a fucking tiger. That's a fact. A fact. Plus, I know I'm bigger, because I measured when he was asleep. Seriously, if that was all I was packing, I wouldn't be sticking photos of anything on the internet, let alone putting beautiful rendered pictures of my above-average broadsword on sites with a caption that says, what do you think, ladies, and they use the letter U instead of Y-O-U. Uh, not that I've ever done that. I, I haven't, but I mean, seriously, what do you expect? Look at me. Women can't handle me. I've got all the chromosomes, X, Y, Z, all of them. I'm a male. You, hot young jogger, a layer of sexy she sweat forming on your attractive bow. You want to bet a star right now? Fuck off, creep. This is called running, not jogging. Jogging's for dorks like you still stuck in the 80s. Maybe if you ran a little, you wouldn't have man tits. Tit, tits, these are pecs. They're man tits. Pecs. I can bench press 80 pounds. Smell my pheromones, huh? I don't even use deodorant. <laughs> Natural. Oh, you may think you have a great rack, but gravity always wins in the end. <laughs> Those puppies, <laughs> they'll turn into big old dogs soon enough. That's the great thing about getting older, is chick's boobs sag, but our schlongs just get bigger. <laughs> she probably just wants me to chase her. Women love the chase, L like a tiger chases a gazelle. Man, I'm really into this nature motif at the moment. Maybe I should get a satin jacket with a tiger on the back so that the ladies know exactly who they're dealing with. Yeah, like tigers, I'm an endangered species, you know? And I would chase her if it were for you, Laz fans, because I know you deserve more than me running after some ass. Running after some jogger in the park, which I know I could bang. I know! <laughs> I mean, you want a radio show, not to hear me bang. I know you need more than just the, the wild beast philosophy of a rhino let loose on the, the great plains of Middle Park, impregnating she rhinos, conquering the world, a massive horn. I really need to spread my scent a little right now. And by that, I mean pee. Jesus, I've been standing out here for ages. It is impossible, let me tell you out there uh, in Radioland, it is impossible to find a place to pee in this city, and the fascist shops won't let you use the bathroom unless you buy something. Which is why I like to do as the true locals do, and just piss in the street, like in this flower bed. Watch this. Stop right there! You! With your dick out! It's okay, I'm, I'm just demonstrating something for the radio. Shit, uh, let's take a quick break. Come back here! All right, we are back. Radio broadcast almost live from the streets of Liberty City. This is your city brought to you only on Integrity 2.0. The station has really brought a new meaning to Integrity. It's brought a new meaning to media. You know, I take the values of new media and I bring them to old media. You know, that's raging ego, substandard content, and heartbreaking inanity. I'm just kidding. This is about cutting-edge free speech, a spirit of innovation, adventure, paid for by our sponsor, which I should mention, this episode of Integrity brought to you courtesy of Isaac Hammerstein and Daughters Funeral Services, burying your dead to their final resting place with dignity. So much dignity that at a funeral, while I'm fucking crying my eyes out, you pick up a dead man's sister, even though she isn't properly divorced from my dad yet. My mom is dating some dude who touches corpses all day. Hey, can you imagine that? I just get creeped out touching his leathery old uh, formaldehyde hand. Ugh, everything around the house has these yellow stains on it, and everything's about death. I'm about life. I mean, not like uh, like a protester, because I've done the other thing a few times, but I mean, we had to. She was young. But listen, if your loved one passes away, which they always do, usually at a really inconvenient time, like when I'm snowboarding or too stoned to drive, get them buried by Isaac Hammerstein and Daughters Funeral Services, bringing dignity to a difficult time at new recession prices. And maybe then, old Isaac can join your family. <laughs> I'm just joking. I, I, I love you, you old goat. Seriously. Seriously, when I, when I die, I want nothing more than your hand up my ass and your straw sucking the brain out of my skull and replacing my bodily fluids with toxic chemicals so a bunch of assholes can sit around and pretend to cry like they cared about me. Nobody cares about me. 
Um, as you can see, sponsors, advertising on Integrity 2.0 is a personal service that I bring you and your target demographic, you know, together in a harmonious way, like in a 70s record where everybody's high. Yeah, I make these reads personal. I'm cutting through the marketing nonsense. Uh, speaking of nonsense, Integrity 2.0 is expanding. We are becoming a team. That's right. Integrity 2.0 taking over. It's like how things are merging these days. You used to go to Clucking Bell, and that was great because you wanted to eat a bucket of chicken and then go home and cry. And then you said, if only Clucking Bell and Burger Shot were in the same place, I could enjoy both at the same time. So then you're like, what if all fast food restaurants were like at a truck stop? Like, if the world was a giant food court. We're making radio a giant food court. And out in the parking lot, a man will kidnap your daughter. That's life on the open road. I know. <laughs> My sister disappeared that way. <laughs> and I didn't do it. Why would I kill my sister? But anyway, we're taking on a team of highly skilled, well-paid interns. Pay not in cash, but in exposure, experience, a degree in the University of Laszlo. That sounds like an awesome t-shirt. University of Laszlo. Uh, and without further pomp and circumstance, let me introduce you to the, the show's new intern, assistant to the producer, Jorge, uh, but I call him Georgie Boy. It's Jorge. Georgie Boy is what liberals call an undocumented worker. <laughs> but he's my little buddy. Aren't you my little buddy? No. Uh, Jorge the intern. Let me ask you, if you die of sunstroke outside a hardware mega store waiting for work, uh, where would you like your body to be taken? El Salvador. Right. El Salvador, which is Spanish for the Savior. And who is our Savior? Isaac Hammerstein and Daughters Funeral Services. Correct. They saved this show and my career. So let's get to it, Georgie boy. Jorge. Right. Whatever. What I need is an intern to bring me ideas, okay? I be funny. I am funny. I get all the credit. You learn a valuable lesson at the University of Laszlo. All right, tell me, where did you work before? In Nicaragua. Nicaragua, which is a company that sells nicotine water. See if you can get them to sponsor the show, man. I'm addictive. And I'd love to drink nicotine water. So Integrity 2.0 is more than just a radio show. We're a radio show that walks the streets of Liberty City, feels the pulse, see if it's if it's dead, you know, uh, like you sometimes do with a girl that's drank too much. And it's not date rape. You caress the thighs, you get slapped, you stick in a finger. It's real radio. I mean, any successful radio show needs a sidekick. So as I stand under this decorative awning, smoking a cigarette, Jorge's out there rounding up potential sidekicks for me to interview. Mr. Laszlo, Mr. Laszlo, I find you sidekick. Hi, do you have a second for gay rights? Oh, God. It's one of these activists that are in every major city now. They stop people on the sidewalk. They harass them for money. They make them feel, they, you make people feel guilty. Come on. And don't you have a second for gay rights? A second? Well, okay, just a second. I mean, sometimes it's five minutes if I'm drunk and, you know, nobody's looking. We've got a petition here that would let gay people marry. G g w lesbians? L lesbos? <laughs> Married? <laughs> right. That totally ruins the fantasy. Married people are hideous and sexually boring. All they do is talk about siding and shit. I mean, it, it ruined my first marriage when I brought another woman in. Because I was like, hey, time for a three-way. And she's like, how about no way, you balding has-been? And then she splits. She empties my bank account. And the woman I brought home, who I didn't know at the time was heavily medicated, she fucking sues me. Lesbo, lesbo. <laughs> I'm sorry. G Georgie here, just beginning to learn the language. Uh, uh, Georgie, uh, este muchacha no gusta muchachos. No? Uh, si, uh, solamente gusta muchachas. Uh, uh, mucho licky licky, comprende? <laughs> licky licky. What are you telling him? Um, I told him you really like ice cream. He's looking at me really creepy and is pretending to lick between his fingers. Uh, you gotta understand, his people are very passionate about ice cream. It's, it's really hot where he lives in Peru. It's like the equator and shit. And ice cream melts so fast there, you gotta lick it off your fingers because it comes right off the cone. And, and often you have to lick it off your fingers in a V pattern. It's, it's Peruvian. Honduras. That's what I said. Georgie, come on, let's stroll. God, what a great city this is. A great city to walk through. It takes you in, holds you tight. Georgie, now, I have an idea. Walk in front of me, uh, clear a path, you know, make a big deal. You, you know what, take this camera, and as I walk, take pictures of me like you're the paparazzi. Say my name a lot, make a huge deal, all right? All right, here we go, go ahead. Laszlo, Laszlo, here, over here, Laszlo. That's right, excuse me.
excuse me, pardon me, people, the paparazzi always hounding me at the pool, taking pictures of me in a swimsuit and on the internet all the time. God, they, they take pictures of me on the toilet if they could. I'm really sorry about this. Laszlo, you full famous, like reality star. Uh, Laszlo, over here. Oh my God, that's Laszlo. Who? You know, Laszlo. He was a talentless dick in the 80s. Man, he's short. And he's bald. What a homo. <laughs> Funny. Laszlo, homo, homo. No, Georgie, not funny. That's offensive and unkind. Homo, homo. No, no homo, homo. Great. Look what you did. You taught him a new word. He's going to get beat up outside the hardware mega store now. Oh, Georgie, check it out. It's one of those street musicians that, that plays on buckets and pans and stuff that they sleep on top of in the gutter. But poor people can't afford drum kits, Georgie. Hey, yo, brother, nice rhythm. Uh, give me some skin. You standing in my donation tray. Oh, shit. Uh, dude, shit, man, I am sorry. Fuck, you spill all my money. I guess it's a lesson for life. I I've just sort of redistributed your wealth to all these people walking by. Hey, that's his money, asshole. He, he beats on a fucking pot for that. Dude, this is chump change compared to what you could be making as my band. Y you know how late night talk shows have their, their own band? You could be the band, man. The Laszlo Show on Integrity 2.0 Orchestra. A and since you can't even afford a drum kit, <laughs> I don't have to pay you shit. What the fuck? Uh, cool out. Homie. Dog. Let's not get all wound up. Turn your hate into rhythm. A rhythm of the streets. A rhythm of the night. Oh, whoa. Oh. Hey, wait, what are you doing? Hey! Ow! Get this motherfucking bucket off of my head. I need a drum, motherfucker. Fuck, let's take a commercial. All right, we are back on Integrity. You know, so many people come to this city, they never really discover the true Liberty City, like Star Junction, where the action is. To really experience the city, you gotta interact with the locals. In the tourist areas, the really cool areas, not like the ghetto places with restaurants you never heard of. If you go to Star Junction, you see people getting their picture drawn by a caricature artist named Lang Lee or Hing Hong or something like that. I am getting mine drawn at this very moment, and later, I'm gonna get my name written on a piece of rice. Then, I'm gonna take Georgie, huh? To the Statue of Happiness, right, Georgie? Yes. Yes. So we're going to remind him that some people actually play by the rules and immigrate legally. But me and Georgie, we don't play by the rules, do we? No. We are the <laughs> outlaws of radio, right? Yeah. Outlaws. And you're driving, and I'm hanging out the passenger side window, blam, 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 you know, shooting at the cops. And I hit one of the tires, and it flips over, and they all crawl out, and none of them are hurt. Just like on TV. We are outlaws of radio because I can make you laugh and Georgie can do some drywall work. Fuck you, Laszlo. Uh, listen, me jefe, I'm the boss. I'm here teaching you. I'm the professor of radio at the University of Laszlo. Georgie, tell me, how does my picture look? Huh? Is he capturing my, my brooding air and my romantic disposition? Helicopter landing pad. <laughs> what? Helicopter landing pad? What the fuck? Let me, let me take a look. Hey, you street urchin? No, good picture. Good picture, my ass. I told you, don't focus on the hair, and you've drawn a big bald spot in this. Focus on the ponytail, like a stallion's mane. Girls like to ride horses, often naked. They like a guy that's got long flowing locks that looks like he can play bass. What's his bald spot for? For helicopter. Shut up with the helicopter shit. Shut up, or I'll call the helicopter to come take you home, Georgie. Listen, I'm not paying for this picture, sir. I said draw me with a fuller head of hair, a nice ponytail, a goatee to please the ladies when I go down south of the equator. You know how I do it, Georgie. Yeah. South of the fucking equator. <laughs> I'm the king. A <laughs> good Yeah. Well, I mean, not with you, Georgie, but, but with girls. With girls, right, Georgie? Girls, yeah. Yeah, we're not gay, are we, Georgie? No. No. That's what I wanted to see in this picture. Look at this. You've given me man tits. I draw what I see. You have man tits. Ah, screw you and your crappy drawing. I'm tearing this up. You pay for that, you bald bastard. Come back here. Oh, let's take a quick break. Come on, Georgie. It is the Laszlo Show. It's called Integrity 2.0 in association with Isaac Hammerstein and Daughters Funeral Services. It's my new station, my new sponsor. It's all me. How great is that? <laughs> and it's and I'm not egotistical. It's just it's it's what this town has been calling for. Radio's gone bankrupt. Okay, all the formats are shutting down. It's all sports talk and Hispanic stations. Who wants to listen to Hispanic stations? I do. Pre precisely. I, I I don't understand a word they're saying, and every other word is goal. Listen, 
Listen, Georgie, where are we going next? Dance group. Grindy, grindy, pretty ladies. That's right. We grindy, grindy the pretty ladies in America. I promised you I'd take you to see the nightlife of Liberty C and let the radio fans out there know where they can get some action. The clubs really define this town. They're vain. They're overpriced. So, intern Georgie and I are standing outside this hoppin' nightclub. Oh, I should mention, this segment is being recorded live. It's, it's not broadcasting live. That technology kind of costs a fortune, but one day. For all the people that will one day listen to my show on the internet when I revolutionize radio there too, so people in Uganda can be blessed with my discussions. They, they need some, some help, some, some American radio to entertain them sitting in the dust, for God's sakes. Let me tell you, Liberty City has got the best clubs, and a lot of them even I have trouble getting into. <laughs> Just joking. I can get in anywhere. I'm the fucking, I'm the king of this town. I got, I got VIP access. You know, people recognize this face. There's, there's one great spot in Alderney where they even paid me to go. And I threw t-shirts to people in the crowd and, and did shots with tan girls. And one girl let me feel her implants. It was epic, man. It was something else. It was some kind of party for uh, an insurance company. It was awesome. Anyway, this place that we're in front of right now is called uh, Maisonette 9. Hi, uh, excuse me. Uh, this is the press. This is this radio show. It's Integrity 2.0, my radio show. Uh, my name's probably on the list. It's, it's Laszlo, my, my assistant called ahead. I don't see you on the list. Have a good night. You guys should try Bahama Mamas. That's your kind of place. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Come on, bro. You need some celebs in there. And you've got one right here. I'm sorry. Not after last time. You know, if I wasn't working, you'd be in some real trouble right now, dude. I'd break your neck, you big piece of shit. Oh, you've got size, but I've got speed. I know martial arts. Right, Georgie? Yes. That's right. Georgie's seen me bust some mad moves. Like kung fu, like jump up in the air and everything. Slow-mo. Slow-mo. That's right. Slow-mo, bitches. Get the fuck out of here. Oh, fuck. Come on, Georgie. I'm not going to stand here and get laughed at by a, a bunch of vapid bitches. <laughs> Look, everyone. It's Laszlo. Laszlo. It's Laszlo. Laszlo no get in. But Laszlo no get in. <laughs> Shut up, you little shit. I'll have you deported. I I'm not an ugly American, but I will have you deported. You asshole, Laszlo. No, I'm not asshole. I'm an entertainer. <laughs> There's a big difference. That, that place is over anyway. Let's go to Bahama Mamas, man. They love me in there. But <laughs> last time I was there, it was kind of a gentleman's establishment. But uh, not that uh, not that old Laszlo ever has to pay for it. Laszlo pay for it. No. Laszlo has never paid for it. Girls give it to me for free. And the clubs, I get in free all the time. A anyway, where's this other club? No say. What? No say. No say what? Say something. Mm eh... Man, your English is a joke. It's really embarrassing. And you know what's also embarrassing? Bad embalming. Remember, people, if you die, Isaac Hammerstein and daughters. Death with dignity. Leathery old hands that touch your mother. And they sponsor the show. <laughs> and trust me, when they say daughters, they do so to let you know they aren't pets. I mean, seriously, if your mom gets remarried, you hope for sexy stepsisters. You know, something interesting, lonely, that, that kind of thing. Isaac Hammerstein's got a, a couple of wildebeests on his hands. I mean, ugly. <laughs> word isn't enough. There needs to be a new word to describe them that means so ugly that there's an earthquake and mirrors crack. And and one of them, God, she has the nerve to ask me to stop touching her? Should have billed her, huh? She was lucky. She's trying to do her a favor, boost her confidence a little. You gotta boost fat girl's confidence, a, a little ass grab, you know? You play little doctor like you, you always do with your sister, huh? And what does she do? She calls me a molester. How can you molest something that's not even human? It's not molesting if they're ugly. Trust me, I've been doing it for years, and it doesn't count if they're not human. It's called science, people. Science. It's an examination. Molesting is when they're human and can complain, or, or they don't like peanut butter on their junk. <laughs> Those sheep wouldn't have complained if they could have. They were loving it. They looked like, uh, you know, the way I get when I'm in a day spa sometimes, even when it's a guy massaging you. You know what I mean. Don't say it's just me. Where is this place? We've been walking around forever, Georgie. I know it's around here somewhere. Man, this town at night is horrendous. Drunk people, homeless people, no one's normal. What are we going to do? I can't believe I can't find this place. That's what the suburbs will do to you. I used to know downtown Liberty City like my own penis. Every highway and byway. Now I'm not so sure where the hell I am. Uh, excuse me, uh, mister. Do, do you know there's a good club around here? For people like you guys? No, for my mother. Yes, of course. For someone like 
like me, not us. Don't mind him, he's just my intern. Sure, whatever. Yeah, there's a place down the block on the left. It's a club you really like. It's called Hercules. <laughs> Sounds like my kind of place. They must have named it Hercules because it's for people that are gods. <laughs> I can roll with the beautiful set. Me, tanned, virile. Cool. Hey, thanks a lot, man. Come on, Georgie, let's go find us some nightlife. Man, can't wait to go in and meet some hot piece of ass, grind on her. There is nothing like rubbing your groin against a complete stranger to, to make you really love life. Hercules, man. Hercules. I, I've never heard of this club. I like the Greek theme, though. Love it. I love gyros and short chicks. Should be a blast. I even like a, a big nose. Georgie, I think we are finally going to get lucky tonight, you know? Well, this must be the spot. And judging by the line, all the chicks are inside already. Maybe they do one of those women get in free before 10 p.m. offers that really brings out the skanky sluts, you know? A couple well drinks, and next thing you know, she's banging you in the bathroom. Ha! <laughs> My kind of girl. Girls, ladies night tramps and give it up for free shots. I love them. I love sluts. Mm. You know, you really should have seen the 80s sluts, Georgie. <laughs> they were phenomenal. All right, Georgie, let's go and catch herpes all over again. Everyone, this has been Integrity 2.0. We're broadcasting from the streets of Liberty City. I'll let you know how we do in here. Hola, muchachos. Este es Lazlo aquí. Este, este gordito es Lazlo. Y quiere tener sexo con tres hombres al mismo tiempo. Escojan a ver quién. That's right. I am a celebrity. Thank you very much. And I'm here. I'll... Wow, everybody seems really interested in me suddenly. It's the Chattosphere with Michelle and Laszlo. Hi, I'm Michelle Makes. And I'm Laszlo. And this is Chattersphere with, with Michelle, Michelle and Laszlo. God, I just love doing that. Me too. So, anyway, on today's show... On we're gonna, today's show... We've got some amazing we stuff. We have a co-host who is not accepting the reality of their contract. Come on, Michelle, let me do the intro, okay? I'm really good at it. I know how to monologue. Seriously, I talk to myself a lot. You know, sometimes I just stand in front of the mirror with no clothes on and say, you like this? You want some of this? And oh, my I know. I get it. You're an adult loser. You're pathetic. Every show you do this. No, I'm sorry. You know the rules. Sorry, everybody. See, we're Vinewood liberals. We love each other, but we've got massive egos, so we can't quite get along. My ego was shattered long ago. You know, it was, it was called the 80s, but I picked up the pieces and glued it together with bourbon and acting out sexually with not that very attractive of a woman. Okay? So, speak for yourself. I'm speaking for the show, dicktard. Chattersphere, hosted by me, Michelle Meeks, with sidekick support work from you until your contract runs out and you can be let go, Mr. Laszlo, I don't have a surname. Every week. You rub my face in it every goddamn week. Because every week you act like I'm not here and it's still one of your countless previous shows that didn't work out and yet somehow allow you to fail upwards. Man, you must have some amazing pictures of whichever executives you're blackmailing. Listen, if you're going to fail, fail up, I always say. And you, you're not even being fair. Fair is you calling me a bitch? That was once. Or stealing my jokes? That was twice. Or interrupting me? Or I don't interrupt you. Or you just did it again. I know, it's a joke. The reason men interrupt women all the time is because you yammer on and on. Oh, yeah. And they talk and they talk and you do the math. Really funny, misogynist. Make me out to be a shrew so you can attack me. That's the easiest trick in the book. This is the 21st century, Laszlo. We're all equal now. Every right-minded person in this city knows that and still you've got gender issues. The fact is you hate women. I love women. <sighs> Michelle, come here. I, listen, we, we're, we're off on the wrong foot. Let me rub your back. Oh my God, is that a Ew, mall? Ew, get off. Don't rub my back. Besides, you're only a liberal because you're John depends on it. Don't be mad at me because you've got moles. You should get that checked. And I'm a liberal because you have to be in the entertainment industry. I'd much rather be chewing tobacco, grabbing my nuts, mistreating women, wearing a wife beater shirt, drinking gin, huffing Freon. I'm the real deal, Michelle. The real deal. My fans know it. <laughs> when I work out, I do it for the fans. When I'm pumping iron, looking at my pecs, I go, the fans want these pecs. I got a TV show, a radio show. I'm everywhere. I'm on a billboard. I'm in bathrooms. Then one idiotic program director on a rinky-dink talk network says that I don't attract the youth demographic. Well, that's because they're all high. So now I'm saddled with a 22-year-old microblogger with typical millennial issues as a co-host. Host! Whatever. You're the co-host of Chatter. Sphere, the
the right-minded, left-thinking, progressive entertainment talk show for all of Los Santos and Blaine County. Oh, you just love saying that, don't you? My name's Michelle Meeks. God, you're like a parrot that sits on the shoulder of a pirate. You hate women, and you won't stop quoting those dragon brain fantasy novels. I like saying winch, even if it is from 1402 and there were dragons flying around upside down. Ugh, enough of your renaissance fair speak. You're ridiculous. We have an incredible show today. We've got, who have we got? Let me see, Brother Adrian. He runs the Children of the Mountain, that study program you keep hearing advertised. That is a cult. Why do they always give me the cults to interview? God, I'm doomed. You want to do a show in this market? It's cults and, and whack jobs and fake boobies everywhere. You're so judgmental. I'm not talking about yours. They're tiny fake. I mean, it's cute. I'd like to put little army men on them, and they could have a little battle, and I'd take pictures and put it on the Internet. That's disturbing. It's awesome. It's pretty sexual. No, please. Keep describing my rack. It's really doing things for me. Okay, I You will. host a singing contest and work on a celebrity and liberal talk show. The one thing you're not meant to have is a Opinions. Don't be mad at me because you've got hairy nipples. What are you talking about? I've seen them. You know what? You do the show. You're obviously so much better at radio than I am. What have you been on the air for? Six months? I love it when you sulk. I feel like your mother. Anyway, we have a great show. Before Brother Adrian, we're going to speak to a few of your favorite stars, everybody. Actor Jimmy Boston will be on the phone. Tyler Dixon. Milton McElroy. Then we'll take some calls, discuss the issues affecting Los Santos, entertainment, politics, health. It's going to be a great show. Yeah, there's nothing like liberal politics and Vinewood to get people excited. Listen, everybody. Since I started endorsing a hybrid, I really feel like an expert on green issues. That's great. I saw the commercial. It's just so powerful. Oh, thanks, Michelle. I love you, Laz. Is he on the phone? He is. Great. Here's someone we all really love. You are really wowing us with your new show, Jimmy Boston. How's it going, Jimmy? Yeah, everything's going great. It's a great show. Really great. I told my agent I wanted something serious and character-driven, but that also shows I've got great abs. So yeah, Lifeguard 3D is a fantastic career move. That's just great. <laughs> yeah, movies are overrated. TV, it's where it's at. We'd love to get you on my show. Maybe you could come on and sing with me like a duet. <sighs> Man, it's so great that you're doing something more meaningful. Uh, Jimbo, you know, we could grab a drink sometime, hit the town. I know some amazing underground clubs where celebs like me and you hang out and finger groupies. <laughs> Thanks, Laszlo. Thanks a lot. Listen, you're a cool guy. I love how you do that whole radio host thing. Really funny stuff. And normally, ugly guys sort of act all shy, but you've got lots of personality, and you're really funny, I think. Anyway, glad you love the show. Peace. Kiflom. Oh, not another one. These Absalon guys are taking over. I think he blew you off there, Laz. That's a bromance you're going to have to let slide. He didn't even want you to be a cameo on Lifeguard. Your career could be out swimming and get into trouble and need rescuing. You've got no friends, Laz. Please, I would be amazing on that show. I would totally wear a banana hammock. I've got friends, Michelle. Lots of friends. And we all hang out in banana hammocks together. Wow, sounds amazing. I'd love to get involved. You have friends? Call one. I would totally rotisserie you. Ew. Oh, I feel soiled. It's fun. You should try it. And you know what? Maybe I will call one of my friends. Look at this address book on my phone. Packed with friends. Look, it's my friend Reed. Maybe I'll call Reed, but you know, later. People don't want to hear from my friends. <sighs> Man, I was out last night partying. Oh, good times. Bottle service. Well, I mean, I snuck the bottle in, but God. And there's nothing like taking advantage of a lonely divorcee from the Midwest while she quietly weeps to let you know that you're a star. I'm on television. The chicks love it. You really are a man. That made me very sad. That entire monologue was, well, it was disgusting. And she's probably crying because it was over in 60 seconds. Who cares? I got mine. I busted a nut. Please don't use that black scent again. And you really hate women. Ball all you want. Sorry Mother Nature made your private parts so tedious. Ugh. Anyway, we've got another celebrity calling in. Someone you can really relate to. An actor and a reality TV star, Tyler Dixon. Hey, Tyler. How's the new show? Hey, how's it going? Yeah, I'm just really loving the new show. I mean, it's really different because it's a reality show, but, like, I'm already famous. So it should be... Really interesting and different. It's, uh, it's kind of like starting on season two of most shows, which is sort of amazing. That's just great. And any movies, or are you waiting for the right role? Yeah, uh, I really want a big dramatic role. You know, one I can sink my teeth into. Something about character, you know? You know w with a volcano or something where I could be like a superhero. 
What have you done? I'm tired of his blathering. Volcanoes. This whole town is deluded. I love the idea, though. A new kind of reality show about famous people. That's going to be the best of both worlds. Oh, it sounds fantastic. Don't be sarcastic. You're just bitter because they didn't offer it to you. <sighs> Let's go to the phones. Yeah, we want to hear from you out there about what's going on in your Los Santos. Hey, I can't believe what you guys said last week about award shows. I really love them. The interesting features, actors rattling off names of people you've never heard of that they blew to get the job. Movies you'll never watch that win the prizes. I love award shows. They make me cry. Award shows are really fantastic. I mean, the Pop Video Awards? So relevant. So controversial. Yeah, fantastic. Nothing like giving each other plastic statues to help elevate art. Next caller. Hey there, I'm Simon. I'm a big fan of the show. Now listen, I just wanted to share with everyone, you don't need to spend all that time working out. I found a perfect solution, okay? I got pec implants, six-pack implants, calf implants. Shoot, I'm perfect. You hear that, Michelle? Why do I need a bisexual Austrian personal trainer to shout and debase me? Hold me to the ground, tell me that I'm worthless, all sweating on me? Who wants to share sweaty equipment or get disgusting fungus? Share showers with strangers? What are you, nuts? I don't want Hong Kong foot or ringworm. I found the perfect fail-safe solution. Surgery! Thank you. That's a guy after your own heart, Laz. Idiotic and superficial. Oh, we have a caller for you. Says his name is Reed. What's up, Laszlo? Hey, buddy. Uh, just to be clear, Laszlo, we're not friends. I defriended you years ago from all of my social networks. Wow, you are a mess, Laszlo. Next caller. Hey, Laszlo, that's offensive what you said about fantasy football. You mean when I said it was for creepy perverts who run around the house in a jock strap pecking away at a laptop? Hey, I'm not a pervert. I'm just really into fantasy sports. I have a fantasy football team. I think about it for hours. Fantasizing we just won. We're in the locker room. Half the guys are nude. We're really pumped. We're taking a shower. And then, and then, and then. Okay, anyways, so what if me and my friends get together with our laptops and watch the game? It's really exciting. I love statistics. Okay, so, so let me get this straight. You've decided to pump up the, you know, tedium of watching sports and interject the nonstop laugh-a-minute fun of statistics. Listen, there's only one statistic I'm interested in, and that's how many hoes I've had. What, what? Ugh, you keep a running total on the wall? Really classy. That's three digits, woman! Ha <laughs> ha! One day you'll understand about conquest, Michelle. Speaking of, here's an interesting caller that wants to talk about conquests. Hey, uh... Big fan of the show, but I got a question. What's the, uh, what's the deal with Mars? Well, it is the fourth planet from the sun, and its reddish hue is from iron oxide. This is your space moment of Chattersphere. I mean, why do we have a dune buggy up there? I don't even have a dune buggy. Mars is bullshit. God, man, I'd love to go to Mars or a space station, you know, get some groupies up there, watch my DNA fly across at zero gravity. It'd be amazing. I could start my own religion. And an entire civilization of people bred from me. That would be great. I can see it. Me and a couple of hot Martian chicks. You are revolting. So hypersexualized. Don't you know that we live in a new liberal age where we never say anything mean or crude? It's the new America, the one we've always wanted. Hey, don't get me wrong. America's a great land. You know, it proves you can conquer anything with booze and syphilis, and I've had both. Hey, those colonizers caught syphilis in this country and took it to Europe. Serves them right for wiping out the indigenous culture. Oh, here we go. The hippie lesson of the day. Culture smulcher. And now... Now, Los Santos is just coffee shops, banks, and pharmacies. So cultured. So we had to wipe out a few people. I need a bean machine coffee. I'm stressed. I love this town. You know, you could be smug about the rest of the country and live in a vacuum pretending that there's an endless supply of revenue to just hand out to people and for new metro projects. You know, where we're obsessed about the environment, but people are dumping chemicals on their lawns so much that it gives their neighbors birth defects. I mean, this is a state that's got the worst carbon footprint in the world while everybody goes around pretending they like the outdoors. This is a proper liberal's paradise, man. And I worked hard to be king of this paradise, Michelle. I work hard, okay? Your younger generation, millennials, don't understand that. You just listen to your iFruit phone and do yoga. When I kill over dead from working, I want you to say, that Laszlo, he died of a broken heart. Well, cocaine broke your heart. Well, a bit of recreational snort never hurt anyone. Besides, the chicks love it. 
Anyway, all I do is Molly now. It's, it's virtually a health food. Let's go to the phones. Marshall from Where to Del Sol. Hey, Laszlo, I take real issue with what you said about marching bands. They're brilliant. They're really erotic. <laughs> marching bands with your matching Napoleonic costumes turning rock classics and pop hits into garbage? Oh, look, I'm a toy soldier blowing into a tuba. Do you think a stadium full of drunks cares about your stupid song? We want to see bitches shooting t-shirts. Oh, look at me. I'm an adult in a marching band. Oh, boy. You need help, dude. At least I'm not pretending to be someone half my age. Good point, Marshall. He got you there, Laz. Speaking of lost souls who need a bunch of help, I think we have the perfect guest for you. Laszlo, introduce him. Coming up on Chattersphere with Laszlo and Michelle. Is... Michelle and Laszlo. That is what I said. It's not. Well, whatever. Let me speak. Getting saddled with a woman to appeal to more liberal listeners? I am liberal. Seriously. I've got a TV show, which makes me liberal. So shush, woman. Coming up next, what have we... Uh, oh, not this again. God, i got to take this producer out and piss on their head. How original. A cult leader in Los Santos. I, I mean, a promoter of alternative thought. Coming up next on Chattersphere with Michelle and Laszlo. Alternative therapy life coach, committed spiritualist, and senior lay preacher of the Children of the Mountain Fellowship, Brother Adrian. Brother Adrian, welcome to the show. Hello, my child. My children, both of you. Welcome to the now. So good to have you on the show. Yeah, it makes a real break from the whack jobs and crazies I normally interview. You know, our guest Booker gets us celebrities, but the, the publicist makes us take these has-beens and, and won't-bees. I'm not a psychic, Laszlo, but I am sensing a lot of hostility from you. You seem like you are in prison. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't agree more. And you know who the warden is, Laszlo? Uh, yeah, it's Michelle. No, my child... It's you. Oh, give me a break. Yes, mock. Yes, deride. Yes, call me a whack job. You're a whack job. Call me a cultist. You're a cultist. Call me a pervert. You're a pervert. All right. I'm happy. You're miserable. I'm not miserable. Okay, I'm in a career slump. There is a difference. Every time I really start to do well in a market, someone at the station goes whining to HR, and then I get moved to a new place, like a, like a man of the cloth. Hey, speaking of cloth, you're a cult leader, so of course you pretend to be happy, because you say you have all the answers. You're selling people hope. Well, buddy, hope is a lie. I figured out all the answers, <laughs> and believe me, life is a dark, horrible chasm of despair, punctuated by brief moments where you get beer and breasts. So, so trust me, people, <laughs> you do not hope to be like this cult dude. Children of the Mountain is not a cult or a religion. We don't believe in anything. We are a personal development community, using our unique knowledge of human spirituality and development to put you in touch with your true dimension in stages for a price. What do you mean, Brother Adrian? What I mean is this. Through literally weeks of dedicated study, I've discovered the secret to realizing human potential, convention and seminar revenue, and utilizing completeness. I can make you... you... And I can make the you that you are the best you in the whole galaxy of potential yous that are there. Life's a competition. It's a competition with yourself. Well, that's a competition you can win. And I will show you how. <laughs> Dude, I have eight ways of not understanding this. Is this like a 12-step a program? Why do people that quit doing stuff always have to tell everyone else? You know, I quit typing in Granny Wants It Bad into search engines, and I didn't need any program to tell me to stop that. It just took my mom walking in on me on my 31st birthday. Yeah, that's the true definition of shame. A, a mother's boy still struggling against adulthood, you know, pants down, hot laptop on his thighs, things leaking out. I, I've brought shame on my family. Shame is meaning. Believe me, when you have all of life figured out, it's your duty to share with others. And I share my message using a range of goal-oriented reprogramming techniques. It's about completeness and the opportunity that offers to people to realize a beautiful truth in a convention center for a weekend retreat. <laughs> Give me a break. I am doing. I'm giving you the best break of all. The chance to live free of dogma and can't. It's a structured study program. What have you got to fear? 
What is one weekend of your life? Okay, I've been dragged into all kinds of bad situations with that line. I can tell you what one weekend of your life is. One where you wake up with a tattoo and a new wife that pees standing up. Besides, I just have this weird thing against new religions that are founded by tax accountants. Call me boring, but when it comes to imaginary friends, I'm strictly old-fashioned. For the last time, child, we don't believe in anything. There are no secrets. Children of the Mountain is an accredited study program. Follow us and you'll be free from all belief. You'll be free from knowledge. You'll be free to share that with others. Uh, what? This is lunacy. Your hostility is really depressing, Laszlo. You see clearly, Michelle. Laszlo, there's a mountain up there. Let me show you the way. Listen, dude. I've been to the mountaintop, okay? I've been to a lot of concerts and done a lot of drugs. I've been up there, okay? I've had a top-rated talent show on TV and a nationally syndicated talk show. I've been an anodyne metrosexual that literally millions of people look up to, and believe me, it sucks, okay? I believe in one thing only, my relentless ability to screw up. One stupid word, one inappropriate comment, one touch, and an innocent caress between colleagues, you know? And it begins again, the slow descent down. Your ratings come down a bit. The groupies, they start to get older and chunkier and have that weird fat girl smell. You appear in commercials for worse and worse cars and suddenly you're not the spokesperson for an expensive Swiss watch, but for some swingers resort in Guatemala or a war zone. You're on the way down, so you get desperate. You do, you do more and more insane things for ratings. You don't care, but it's no good. The public doesn't love you anymore. Nobody loves you. There's a, a great hole of lovelessness inside you. You're just a shell. Nobody cares. Your, your friends are more successful than you. They, they won't call you back. They, they don't even re-bleach you anymore. Your, your life invader friends start to go down. The, the private members' clubs tell you that you're no longer welcome because you tried to speak to a movie star there. Well, I was a star once, okay? I was, but it's no good. It just, it just, it keeps going down. You, it's okay, it just my going. child. It's not okay. Your producer calls you up. Someone made up some pictures that, that seem to show you, you know, being spanked in a brothel. That's not true. They could put my head on any dude's body. I'm much bigger than that. It's computers. There weren't any cameras in there. You know, it, and then they start calling you a misogynist in the press and on Bleeder. You know, it's not true. Laszlo loves women. I love women. They call me gay, and that's not true. Laszlo's a man. He has a man's needs. Uh, only it, it, st it still keeps coming. The, the great wall of shame and the self-loathing just flows on and on like you're on the ground. And there's just a group of men urinating on you. But it, it's a hypothetical urination. Then one day your producer comes in and says, Laszlo, even though you've been a syndicated radio host for a long time and even though you're great, now you're going you're gonna to be the co-host. The assistant to the host. Shut up, okay? You won. You're perky. You're young. You look great. And I'm the assistant to the host of a woman with literally nothing to say. I get it. You did a mountain of blow in the 90s. It was no one cares. It was fantastic, okay? I'm glad you had blow all over your nose for many years. You don't have a catchphrase. I don't need one. And nobody gives a shit. I was big in the 90s. I was. I remember dot com and we used to program computers like C colon forward slash and HTTP forward 10 print hello 20 go to 10. The great terror of time is something we cover in our study program, my child. Just leave me alone, all of you. There, there. Sometimes from the valley, we can see the mountain through the clouds. That's what makes us its children. <laughs> I don't understand valleys or clouds. It sounds like a nursery rhyme. Oh, you take a minute, Laszlo. Man, listen, anyone saying the male menopause is a myth, just remember this moment, please. It's very simple. You just work through a very cost-effective program and achieve limitless joy. That sounds wonderful. Laszlo, stop crying. I've... I'm not crying. Well, thank you, Brother Adrian. Your seminars seem very interesting. Yes, sir. But I think we've run out of time on Chattersphere. I love you, Michelle. Oh. This has been the Chattersphere with Michelle and Laszlo.
Come on, you dipshit. Ah, that host, man. He's like any closeted TV presenter. Bitter as fucking vinegar. Huh? Where the fuck are they? Hello, sir. May I please have your name? Where the fuck is Tracy Townley, huh? Tracy fucking DeSanta. Fuck, screw that. Where the fuck's Laszlo? It doesn't matter. It is quiet. <laughs> All right. Yeah. That was really All right. It's the auditions Fame or Shame season 14 right here in Vinewood San Andreas. Coming up next, it's Tracy DeSanta. Judges, Tracy DeSanta. Yes. <laughs> Hi. All right. Tracy's a dancer, but she also likes acting, modeling, and working with children. That's, that's beautiful. You're so original, like oh. a, a basket full of puppies or a <laughs> rainbow or a pile of puke. Oh. Who are these clowns? That's my dad and Trevor? Two dads. Uh, <laughs> Great. Wow. Very San Andreas. What are you guys doing here? Yeah, what are you uh, doing here? Okay, I'm back. Relax, chill. Make yourself at home. He's got a little show to do here. Okay. Three, Two, one. All right, it's fame or shame for Tracy DeSanta. Music. Ah! Yeah. Shake what your daddy's gave you, honey. Mm. Get that out. Stuff a 20 in this. Oh! <laughs> fucking do something about this? <laughs> uh, all right, that's enough. Oh! Oh! I said that's enough! Hey! 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 hey, hey I got security! Uh, security! No, what you fucking say? Come on! Big guy. Oh, come on! Come on! No! No! Fuck! No! Come here, you little shit! No! They took our ride. We take their truck. Get in the truck, Michael! Hey! Hey! Not my ring! I saw him turn left! What was I thinking, buying a hybrid? For my image! The piece of shit! My agent doesn't renegotiate after this shit. He is fired! Oh boy! You pissed off the wrong hillbilly now, Laszlo. You knew it happened one day. I told those asshats we needed more security. Don't die on me now, my sexy little environmentally friendly geisha car. Great! I'm about to die because of a TV show that nobody watches anymore. Stupid foreign piece of shit! They wouldn't kill a celebrity, would they? Illegal. We're gonna flatten his toy car in this big rig. Don't you worry. Fucking Laszlo. I knew he was an asshole. Just push him off the fucking road. It's only a battery car. Come on. This ain't exactly a racer. That cocksucker might be famous, but oh. Ah, ah. He's going down into the LS River. I can see that. I hate that closeted man whore on the TV. I hate him on the radio. I hate him even more in person. He was never funny. The little shit's all out of juice. Hey, 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 hey. guys. You run out of batteries, huh? I didn't mean anything by it, all right? Oh, yeah? Well, that little girl sat on my lap when she was two years old, and I swore to God that I would rip the fucking skin off anyone who fucking wronged her. Look, I'm just a dumb A-list celebrity trying to entertain America, okay? I got a lot of stuff going on right now, dude, besides you trying to kill me. Now, I got multiple sexual harassment lawsuits, plus I'm an addict, all right? And I've relapsed. I can't stop jacking, dude. I jack it in traffic. What's your talent, huh? I mean, aside from love and sex. Dude, haven't you seen my show? It's not live, it's not funny. That's my genius, I got no fucking talent. You clearly ain't being humble, T. Uh, you proved your point. Uh, this is your daughter. You should be wanting to rip the fucking ponytail off the back of this guy's head! And you! Huh? Pants off. Uh, uh, okay. There you go. Uh, uh, All right. 
What are you doing now? I want you to dance sexy, celebrité, mm hmm I mean, I need music, or... Are you trying to fucking annoy me, huh? I'll, I'll dance. Good. <laughs> what the fuck is that? All right, all right, now drop it like it's hot, all right? I want to see you get nice and low. Oh. Come on, lower, oh, lower, no. come on. Oh. Oh. Please don't kill me, okay? Oh. I'm supposed to be on a magazine cover next week. All right, all right. come on, get no. up. Take off, go, now, before I change my mind. Uh. I got it all on my camera, you fucking pussy. The world's gonna see your shit. <laughs> An attack on the set of fame or shame has his host fleeing the scene. But some people don't take rejection well. According to eyewitnesses at the fame or shame auditions at Mays Bank Arena, that's exactly what happened when the relatives of one aspiring singer attacked Laszlo, the host of the show, who was chased from the scene. A call to Laszlo's agent was not returned. What? Tracy's getting another tattoo. No, oh God, no. That Laszlo guy's there. Laszlo? That asshole? What's he want? It's Tracy that wants something. She wants to get back on Fame or Shame after you and Uncle T cut her cameo short. Well, maybe we ought to help her out with that. I'm looking for something hip that, you know, says I'm capable of violence, but I'm awesome in the sack. So listen, babe. If you want to make it in Vinewood, you got to do whatever it takes, even if whatever it takes is a depressed borderline alcoholic who hosts the third most popular talent show amongst the 40-year-old female demographic. So, you'll let me on the show if I blow you? Yes, and if you could wear some black lipstick, the little guy loves the goth vibe. Oh. Whoa, Laszlo. <laughs> Dude, that was entirely out of context, bro. Jim, you find the ink slinger, sit on him. Laszlo here's gonna have a little cosmetic work done. No, please. Whoa, 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 whoa. stay put, you lame-ass Mark. Uh, sure, kid. What? Uh, you're not gonna get me a Prince Albert, are you? Uh, uh, come on, just off the tongue. I need that for my work. Uh, uh, you made me a pouty fucking hipster. Uh, uh, I'm bi coastal. I can't have metal on my fucking face. Uh, oh, are you popping a fucking tent over here, you fucking psycho? Oh, makeup is gonna have a field day. Ah. Ah. Ow. Oh, ho, ho, that looks pretty. Here, let's get rid of this. Ah. Oh, my God. Ah. Papa Bear, what's Daddy number two going to think about this? Ah. Ah. Let's not get him involved. Ah. Ah. Let's do... Uh, just, just to be clear, I'm not paying for this, right? Ah. I always thought tramp stamps could be classy. Come on! You move, and I will knock you in the next week. Oh, shit, that fucking hurts. Mommy! Look, are you gonna tell me what you're drawing, or, or is it a surprise? <gasps> Daddy! Ugh. You're listening to the home of reality in the land of mindless no Should I draw his three pubic hairs? Ah, uh, there we go. Oh, nice. Uh, you got like a camera phone or a mirror? I can. Oh yeah, I'll get you a mirror. Smash uh, you over the head with it. Snip, snip. Oh, this is a real one-stop shop. Look, we can work this out. Like men, you know, if you catch my drift. Mm. You fucking asshole, I'm a celebrity. Oh. Oh, no, that's my, that's my signature, my ponytail. Now I gotta get extensions. No, what you gotta get is my daughter, whatever she wants. Yeah, without sucking on your piddle stick. Look, okay, guys, that was a joke. I'm a clown. I'm a sad, lonely little clown. Hey. You're gonna put her on your show, and you're gonna make sure she looks good. Look, okay, I got a lot of juice in this town, but I mean, I'm not a miracle. Just do it! Yeah. 
Right. All right, Trace, let's go. We gotta get to the therapist. What? So, I'll, like, call you or something, okay? <laughs> Bye. There's never a family that needs therapy. My ponies. How do I look? It's not good, is it? Ah! Oh, I thought you were on your way to therapy! Haven't you done enough? Leave me alone! Weasel News. Laszlo claims he was molested into cutting his hair. Talent show host Laszlo spoke yesterday about the events that caused him to change his appearance. I wouldn't do this to myself. There are dark forces out there, okay? Colts, I mean, Vinewood isn't all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> Seriously. Now, if you excuse me, I, I gotta go to therapy. So, that last little guy been in touch? Yeah. He wanted to say, thanks for the makeover. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him don't mention it. So, is he gonna put you on the show? Yeah, I think so. Good. Listen, I'm glad this is happening for you, but you still gotta go to college. Right after I'm on Fame or Shame and get an agent and all the other stuff. And uh, have you ever uh, thought maybe I shouldn't shoot sex scenes in a green screen kind of environment? Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, the thought has uh, crossed my mind, I suppose. And have you ever shot in France? I heard that you like to do a lot of European artsy stuff. Yeah, yeah, France, you know, the land of art. And is that because a lot of people over there are sex offenders? Yeah, uh, look, thanks. Yeah, um, so, no, wait, I just have a couple more questions, because, um, you know, I actually do some acting on the side. Thanks, Antonio. Give me nice and tight. Never... Hey, it's Laszlo on the red carpet of Meltdown. Some big stars, some beautiful dresses. We're gonna see some side boot tonight. Come on. We did it! Solomon! We fucking did it! Fucking A! <laughs> Fuck you, fate! I may be a lecherous old has-been, but I'm a has-been with a premiere at the Oriental Theater on Vinewood Boulevard. I'll see you in there, kid. Hey, thanks. There you go. Enjoy the picture, everyone! Mr. Richards! Mr. Richards, hi. If I could just bother you for a second. Uh, I'm Laszlo from uh, Fame or Shame. Um, but I do some acting on the side. I was wondering if... Uh... Oh, yeah, of course. You should come see me, kid. I think I got a project that would be perfect for you. Oh, that's fantastic. It's called The Closet. Really modern stuff. <laughs> Pervert. Come on. No, 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 no. Let's go over She's here. lying, okay? I never had surgery. Come on. Milton, Milton, hi. Sorry to bother you. Quick question. Get in here tight. Um, love, love, loved the movie. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate it. When when you were that polar bear and you had to eat your baby, I mean, that okay. was... Okay. All right, Jesus Christ. That was emotional. Stick and I just have a hug. Okay. That really affected me. All right, I gotta go. Thank you so much. Excuse me. Excuse me. Come on. Come on, let's get in there. Ah, Laszlo! Oh, shit. Come on, shit dick. <laughs> This is meant to be a live event, people. We need lights. Where's the light man? Brian, give me a fucking spotlight. All right, let's run through this. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, you are about to witness live television entertainment in front of your very eyes. This is Fame or Shame Live with your host, Laszlo. He does that, and then... Shit, ow! And then I run on, and everybody claps, and then I go, it's time to introduce the guests. And then, where's my assistant with a list of guests? Hello? If you pull that pregnancy pity party on me one more time, I will lose my cool, okay? Tony, your friend's here. All right, thank God. Brilliant. That's a wrap. Piss off, Laszlo. What? This is a nightclub. This live version of an awful TV show is not happening. No, no, but Tony... Oh, but Tony, please, nothing. We have a new landlord. We're going back to what we do best, playing loud music, encouraging awful behavior, dancing until dawn, and having personal crises like good 
God-fearing idiots. <laughs> Tony, please, I'm desperate. <laughs> Listen, I love narcissism. I built a career on narcissism. I stare into the mirror and beat off like a real man. I pose, I preen, but there's a limit here. I cannot, I will not sit here and watch it. We need kids, young people, midlife crisis divorcees, whoever's gonna bring the party. And we need them wasted, and we need them dancing! Not taking selfies with some fuckwits! I ran the fucking 1980s. I was the 1990s. And I'm back. Okay. Get me a DJ! Tony, I'm the DJ. <laughs> I'm the, no, you're not a fucking DJ. You're a dick. A, a dick? But uh, Tony, I got you a bunch of celebs. I'm gay Tony. The gay Tony. I'm the celebrity here. Me and her. But if you want to bring some famous people into the club, we will host them gracefully. Because I am favor and grace and I am back. I got an investor. We're running shit again. I need a DJ. <laughs> I've been high since 2010. What do these kids need nowadays? Uh, I'm having a breakdown. <sighs> I'm too old. Me too. Yeah. Tony, can we hug? Yeah, yeah. Please. Sure, yeah. You shouted at me a lot. All right, all right, all right. And Tony? Yeah. I don't think you can say gay Tony anymore. It's not PC. The internet will go crazy. Okay, I'll bear that in mind. All right, all right. Find me English Dave. English Dave? He's a, a DJ, the booker. He's in the book. All right, come on, boss. Let me show you around. All right, listen, big guy. Work your list of famous people. We're opening very soon. Okay, you got it. Studio Los Santos. What do you think? I think it's 100! <laughs> oh, Woo! What the fuck is wrong with you? I'm seeing tracers. I am the opening DJ. Get the crowd bumping! Get the millennials boys with the wooka wooka wooka! Hey, go away! What? Go get me some celebrities for opening night. Put up in the VIP lounge if you have to, but you will not be DJing! Ha-hem! <laughs> My glow stick! Oh, now. Brave mate. Think of nothing, absolutely nothing, and breathe. Ain't it amazing? Hello, Tone. Ah. Sniff. Ah, no thanks. Hey, baby, four shots. Good news. The big European is on the wing. Private, of course. Spared no expense, as you're paying. Well, it was a cheap plane, but whatever. Should we go and pick him up? And when you get back, we shall have ourselves a little party. Yeah. Here's to Studio Los Santos. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see you shortly. You all right, Laz? A little fucked up. <laughs> Massive fan. Massive fan. Me too. Uh, Solomon. Oh, Big Gates. Actum. No, I've got some serious ED. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you do. No, no, no. EDM. EDM. I made a whole USB of tracks that I produced. <laughs> This is Lazla. High 10. <laughs> too slow. Uh, wait. Come on. Right, shall we? I'm a DJ, too. I, I spend a lot of you know, birthday parties for kids to make extra money because uh, uh, I can't always pay my rent because I live in, in a mansion. I'm a baller. Uh, uh, I'm not desperate. I'm a, I'm a celebrity. People love me. Come on. I love big pretzels like you people. Ah, here it is. We've done it. The party. We got the fucking party. We are the fucking party. Excuse me. All right, have a good time. Enjoy yourself. You deserve it. And downstairs, fully operational, whatever you want it. Tony! Hey, baby! That's a nice dress. <laughs> the time is class of latex. Let's go! How to party again. You're gonna join me, DJ Laszlo, in welcoming my very best friend. I discovered him in Ibiza, which is in the Netherlands. The set was amazing. He is starting his first ever residency in the United States in this club. All right? Please, all of you, give it up for the one, the only, This guy, 
Let me know if you want me to MC. Uh, let me think about it. Okay, great. He wants me to beatbox. I'm gonna fucking get laid. I'm gonna be down here with the chicks. Fucking grind it, bro. Molly, bro. Molly! All right, hey, look, I've been having trouble getting top quality celebs to come to your place. I've been DMing like mad, but it's really not popular enough. I mean, how about we get some local players in? Maybe it'll boost your numbers and the celebrities will follow. I mean, these guys are waiting. Just go pick them up. All right, the crew's all here. We're going to have some fun and get the brand out there while we're at it. Hey, take a pic. Ta tag me. Hashtag Laszlo. Ha I'm trending. Don't worry. I've got this. Hey, <laughs> talk about perfect timing. Eh? I said I could get a celebrity here, and Jimmy Boston has just been arrested. <laughs> if you break him out, he'll have to come to the club. What are you what are you waiting for? Go, go! Slash your PBA badge! Bribe him! Do whatever you need to do! Just get me out! Get this! Oh Jesus! They're persecuting me for my beliefs! Someone get me out of here! Hey! Buddy! I'm in here! Help me! Oh thank Grant! Did Chris Lamar send you? Use the cops! I can't lose the sneaker endorsement deal! Yes! Oh, what an adrenaline rush! We did it! Well, guess I owe Laszlo a solid now. He won't stop DMing me. Well, let's go see what this technology club is all about. Jimmy Boston! Out of a cop car and into our club! If that's not a story that gets people coming here, I don't know what is. I want to hear everybody give it up! Give me some whoop whoop! It's the one and only! Jimmy Boston on the floor! Hey, I got something that's really gonna jazz you up! <laughs> We're a dance club, right? How about I get us a celebrity dancer? A backing dancer. Tyler Dixon! He and Ty D go way back. A long way back. He, he uh, doesn't dance anymore, but, but he'll be great for the brand. Trust me. He knows you're coming, so pick up him and his homie and bring him in. That was stressful. Let's head to the club that Laszlo keeps damning me about. You got them in? This is amazing! Everyone will cover this. Look, if you speak to a journalist, make sure you mention my name. Laszlo. Watch your partners, boys and girls! We got Tyler Dixon in the club! Yo, I've got you a VIP to collect. Bit of a celebrity, actually. Total friend of mine, Poppy Mitchell, huh? She hasn't actually said where she is and kind of blocked on her bleeder, but I think we can figure it out from her Snapmatic profile. I'll, I'll send you the most recent post. We'll find her, pick her up, and bring her to the club. She's here! It's amazing! If we can get her to post from the club on social media, uh, do you know how much that's worth uh, for all of us? <laughs> Does my hair look right? All right, I want to see everyone posting this on Life Invader. Poppy Mitchell's partying tonight! Oh, hey, you want to get some celebs in here? <laughs> this might be our chance. Got a little tip that Lacey Jonas is in the back of a police wagon. Who knows what she did this time. If we can get her out of there, she's probably so doped up on painkillers, she'll think she was on the way to the club already. Go get her while the opportunity's there. Okay, we got Lacey Jonas. She's not the Lacey Jonas she was a, a decade ago, but a few people still care. Now, as long as she doesn't press charges against us, this is going to be a win. Ladies and gentlemen, Lacey Jonas is in the building! Hey, what would you do if I told you I know where Carrie McIntosh is, huh? Carrie McIntosh. If we can find her, we can bring her to the club and everyone will know about it, okay? We just gotta figure it out from her Snapmatic post. Here, let me send you one.
she's here! It's amazing! If we can get her to post from the club on social media, uh, do you know how much that's worth uh, for all of us? <laughs> Does my hair look right? Get your phones out, people! It is the one, the only, Carrie McIntosh! I've got not one, but two of my best celebrity friends coming in tonight. Miranda Cowan and her assistant. <laughs> Get out there and collect them as soon as possible. They, they may seem angry and impatient and greedy, but <laughs> that just means they like you. They're here! <laughs> wow, they, they really came! I knew my name still meant something in this town. D did they mention me? <laughs> Don't say. I I'm gonna go speak to them. <laughs> what a day! Everyone, give it up! We got Miranda Cowan in the hizzy! Oh, Lord! What happened out there? What, stop. <laughs> I do not want to know. Plausible deniability, all right? I was in the club the whole time. This has nothing to do with me. Oh. Shit! How did you mess that up? <sighs> if you talk to the press, don't mention my name, all right? I can't get brought into this mess. One more scandal will ruin me. I'm, I'm woke now. went badly, didn't it? Why can't I catch a break? I can't DJ, I can't host, can't get the celebs in? And you're not helping me here, okay? I'm begging you, show some pity. My life is horrible. And then it gets worse. Dusty. 